This is our league, and this is your league. From the 55-yard line on CFL America Radio and the Sports History Network. The Grey Cup Final, brought to you by National Carbon Company and Northern Electric Company Limited. Northern Electric now takes you to Varsity Stadium for the 1954 Grey Cup Final between the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes. Hello, football fans. This is Dave Price speaking to you from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Well, this is the big one, the Grey Cup. The finale to a football season started way last August. Edmonton Eskimos and Montreal Alouettes, finalists in the East and West, respectively, are going to meet on a surprisingly good gridiron. We'd been led to believe that the field would be a sea of mud, but such is not the case. What looks like water on the field is not water, but peat moss put on after Harry Griffiths, the stadium manager, had spent last night and this morning with big heat lamps out there drying this field out. It's in good shape right now. The Montreal Alouette Band are on the field, led by Joy Dribble, their drum majorette. And now your play-by-play commentators, Jack Wells and Steve Douglas, are standing by, ready to give you a rundown of the team lineup. So over to Steve and Jack. Steve? Thank you very much, Dave. Nice to be on board for the 1954 edition of the Grey Cup between the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes. And I reckon Mr. Wells from Winnipeg and the West would say about the same, eh, Jack? Well, you know, it's always a great thrill to be here for any Grey Cup, but I think more so this year for some unknown reason. I'm getting a tremendous kick out of this Alouette band out here, Steve. They're putting on a great show. Well, they have been a mainstay of the Alouette organization thanks to Lou Heyman and several other members who have worked diligently all season long, and they're coming into focus on our screen on the varsity gridiron right at this moment. Uh, Jack, as Dave has just said, weather conditions, although a little bit on the nippy side, would be, uh, wouldn't you say, just about ideal. Football fan, football player, uh, everybody concerned, eh? I think uh, it'll favor the ball players a little. It certainly won't be too hot anyway, Steve, but uh, those uh, fans, well, you know, there are other ways of keeping warm, and I guess they'll enjoy themselves out here this afternoon. Jack, uh, this would be the 27th time that the West has challenged the East for the Grey Cup since Edmonton, oddly enough, first came East in 1921. Uh, As an Easterner, so-called transplanted variety, I don't want to say this uh, in front of you, but uh, it must be factually stated that up to now, in 26 previous challenges, the West has come out on top four times. The Bombers, three, and Calgary, one, right? Well, I, uh, I think you're giving me the little rub there, uh, Steve, but you're absolutely right. You know, uh, the West has only won it four times, as you say, since the inauguration of this great football classic. But I would like to state uh, that uh, I think uh, it was the Western team that made this football classic what it is today. I mean, the color, the glamour, and all the excitement that goes with a Grey Cup classic was caused when the, when the Calgary Stampeders invaded Toronto back in 1948. You may recall, too, that uh, it was in 1948 that the Calgary Stampeders won the Grey Cup. And you may recall, too, Steve, that the uh, Calgary Stampeders were the only club to go undefeated in an entire season of football. That is correct, Jack. And also, of course, Calgary played against the Montreal Alouettes when the Alouettes last won it in 1949. That's right. Jack, uh, how about... Yes, Dave. And call attention down to the field where the Alouette Band and Drum Majorettes have formed a big replica of the Grey Cup. We can pick that up there down with Drum Major Alan Anderson way out in front, Alan Thompson, rather, way out front. I guess you fellas better go ahead. (laughs) Well, go ahead there, Steve. Well, Jack, I was going to suggest that... um, In the very immediate future, we're going to let our viewers across Canada see some of the top-notch ball players who will be in action today. There is the picture on the screen now that Dave Price was talking about just a moment and moving in towards the sidelines and the benches. The replica of the Grey Cup formed by the Montreal Alouettes. Very wonderful musical organization. They're they're a really glamorous outfit, that, that Alouette band. I'm getting a real... Out of this one, Miss Steve. 
Incidentally, Jack, we must note right now, I think, that this afternoon, a change was made insofar as uniforms were concerned. Before the game, up until about noon today, it was believed that the Montreal Alouettes would wear their customary cardinal jerseys with silver-gray pants, and Edmonton was scheduled to wear the green jerseys with gold pants. However, a change has been made. Jack, you tell them. Well, uh, the Edmonton Eskimos will be wearing their uh, road uniforms uh, so there wouldn't be too much contrast with the Alouettes who have the uh, red cardinal sweater. And I think our television audience will appreciate this because uh, you'll be seeing the white uniforms. That will be the Edmonton Eskimos. And the dark colored uniforms on your television screen will be the Montreal Alouettes. And uh, we've seen uh, most of our HR spotter up here uh, this afternoon, Steve. We've seen the Eskimos in these road uniforms before. They're all uh, spanking clean. I think the, uh, we won't have any trouble uh, discerning uh, the Eskimos from the Alouettes uh, as far as jerseys are concerned, that's for sure. Well, that last bit of change, Jack, also is going to enable the television audience, which is a mighty big one today, to see much more plainly exactly which side belongs to which side. Incidentally, for those of you who are following numbers uh, pluck, plucked out of various spots around the country, Anderson will wear 63 with a white uniform, and Lindsay will wear 81. Those are the only two changes from the present program. I, I, you know, uh, Steve, I think uh, this is being beamed into Fargo, uh, North Dakota, where a lot of uh, Winnipeg fans have uh, migrated uh, for this cup. Now, here's Bernie Poloni of the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, he formerly played with the Maryland uh, uh, Club. First year up here then. Steve. And a great ball player he was, very decidedly, Jack. That's for sure. I think you saw Bernie play a lot when you were down around Maryland, did I you? I did, indeed, and a ball-handling magician, the likes of which you have never seen, <laughs> right? I know I've had to call a lot of his plays uh, during the season, uh, and uh, believe me, if he fooled the opposition like he can fool a broadcaster, he's doing a mighty good job because uh, we got trapped two or three times. Here's Jackie Parker. Uh, he formerly played with Mississippi State his first year in uh, Canadian football. Trouble with picture transmission this morning is a result of network feed. We ask you not to adjust your home receiver. We hope to have the trouble corrected as soon as possible. He pitched like a skeleton falling out of a tree. I think that uh, holds with Parker, too, perhaps. Well, uh, Jack, you've got his own cheering section here today. His father and brother came all the way from Knoxville, Tennessee for this one, so I guess they win the award for traveling the furthest distance to see the Grey Cup 1954 version. Here's another fine ball player. This is the China Clipper, Normie Kwong, playing with the Edmonton Eskimos. Now, Normie has been a stalwart in that backfield of Western Canadian football for quite some time. He played with the Calgary Stampeders when they won the Grey Cup back in 1948, and he held the ground-gaining record in the Western Conference up until this year. A real good, sock-solid fullback. I think he's the only Chinese boy playing in uh, big-time football at the present time. That flash look you're having right now is the Montreal Alouettes in front of their bench, but there's a great ball player, Jack. This is, this is Rolly Miles of the Edmonton Eskimos, uh, Steve, and I don't think Rolly needs any introduction. He has been uh, pound for pound one of the greatest ball players uh, Canadian football has ever seen. I expect that Rolly will have himself a pretty good day out here today because he likes this kind of going. And sure you're here for the Edmonton Eskimos running out onto the field, and they move out. And this ball game will be underway in just a few moments. But I understand you have some ball players you'd like to show us too, uh, Steve. Well, we have a fellow named Sam Echeverry. Just yesterday voted as Canada's top football player of the year. The rifle from Denver University throws that baseball type of forward pass as you were observing in pregame warm-up, Jack. And there is the scoring champion of the Big Four, Alec Webster, who scored 16 touchdowns to equal the Canadian record set two years ago by Yuli Curtis. Webbs is a hard-running type of back, Jack, explosive very definitely. That's Joey Powell, definitely one of the outstanding Canadian football players, plays flying wing, and you'll see that number 82 of his in plenty of action this afternoon for the Alouettes, that's for sure. How about Red O'Quinn? Have you got a picture of him we can have well, a look at? Well, Red it. O'Quinn, right now, the curly-headed boy, played at Wake Forest under his present coach, Douglas P. Head Walker, and the bread-and-butter pass of the Alouettes, Jack, is a button-hook type pass, thrown by Echeverry, received by O'Quinn, who goes down from his right end position and button hooks back facing the quarterback about, oh, say, seven, eight, ten yards down. And he was the second leading pass receiver in the big four this past season. Well, uh, the Alouettes lost a real fine pass catch on this boy Patterson, I understand, too, didn't they, uh, Steve? Patterson was one of the most amazing first-year men who ever came along. 
and definitely a sensation until he unfortunately broke his ankle in one of those freak accidents when he and Virgil Wagner came together colliding in attempting to and successfully so knocked down a forward pass by a member of the opposing team. It was a real tough break in more ways than one. Incidentally, Jack, the officials, we might note them now for today's game. The referee is Hap Scholdice of Ottawa. There are three umpires. They are Cliff Roseboro of Winnipeg, Seymour Wilson of Hamilton, Paul Dojak of Regina. The head linesman is Sammy Richardson of Hamilton. And the field judge is Bill Nairn of Winnipeg. Those are six men. And also, there will be a timer for the East and the West. And the kickoff for this, the 1954 Grey Cup, will take place in just a moment. Official kickoff on the field will be taking place in just a moment. And the 1954 Grey Cup game between the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes, representing the Western Football Union and the Big Four, will take place. Miss Joan Hunter, Miss Argonaut, was crowned last night as Miss Grey Cup of 1954, in case you had not heard this information previously. Miss Joy Dibble. Miss Alouette was second. The young lady from Edmonton, Miss Inez Levinesque, was third. The kickoff will take place from the south end of the field to our right, which the Montreal Alouettes will defend. They will kick off from their 45-yard line. They will be attired, as you see them on the television screen, in the dark jerseys. It is a cardinal red. To our left, the north end of Varsity Stadium, the Edmonton Eskimos, green and white with gold helmets, will receive and the ball game will be underway very shortly. I think that was Mayor Harlock of uh, Edmonton and uh, Mayor Saunders of uh, Toronto also officiating it at this kickoff uh, here this afternoon, uh, Steve. Here is the national anthem, ladies and gentlemen. Dave, Ray Poole, number 79, will kick off for the Alouettes as he has done all season. Lipman, Miles, and Parker are the three deep men. You saw them a few moments ago for the Alouettes in approximately the five-yard line. Here we go. 1954 Grey Cup underway. Miles on the four-yard line. The 15 upfield to the 25. And he is dragged down to earth on the 33-yard line. Pulled down by Chuck Hunsinger, number 84. Alec Webster, number 86. And Ray Poole, who did the booting, number 79. 64 is Juan Sheridan, standing over the football. Number 48 on your screen, Tommy Hugo, the only Hawaiian-born player in Canadian football today, a product of the University of Denver. Alouettes will probably use a 5-4-3 against the Edmonton Eskimos, temporarily at least. The ball is on the 33-yard line. Eskimos into the field first and 10.
Bernie Filoni, number 90, is the ball handling wizard, quarterback in the es Eskimos. Watch him. The quarterback keep play, and Bernie is up across the 35 yard line. Runs smack into the arms of Juan Sheridan and Tommy Hugo. They bring him down to earth on the 37. The gain is about four. Second down and six to go. Center of the Alouettes forward wall ganged up on Filoni on the quarterback keep play. Eagle Keys is the Eskimo center number 40. He's completed to Parker. He is knocked down and finally out of bounds by Juan Sheridan for an Eskimo first down almost to midfield. Miles threw it. The play went a pitch out. A short one in the backfield from Filoni to Rolly Miles. He fired down the far sideline to Jackie Parker and Sheridan and Ellsby combined to knock him out of bounds on the 52-yard line. That is the first first down from scrimmage of the afternoon. Eskimos on the move after taking the kickoff. The ball game after one minute of play, still scoreless, of course. Normie Kwong is the ball carrier up to the 50-yard line. The Alouettes end of the field. Miller, number 72, principal man on the tackle. The gain is eight yards in the play. It is second down, about two to go. Norby Kwong, once again, his number is 95. You keep an eye on the China Clipper of the Eskimos this afternoon. Virgil Wagner came up to help make the stop. Big Tex Coda, number 60, is in two, and so is Tommy Hugo, 48. The Alouettes are going to send deep for this punt that they are expecting with about two yards to go, or less than uh, two yards, about a yard maybe. So close it is that Pap Scholdice, the referee, is calling for an official measurement. The Alouettes figure, however, that there will be a boot coming up. They have sent back Grig and Pal as their two deep men standing around the 10-yard line. We'll show them to you as soon as this measurement is over. It is short, as you see, by about one foot. So this poses a very nice problem for quarterback Filoni so early in the ball game. Ball is on the 48-yard line. Out of went into the field. Eskimos possession. Third down and less than a yard to go. What is a quarterback going to do? No punt formation. The deep men come running up for the Alouettes. Filoni handed off to Rolly Miles, who hit dead into the center of the line and probably made the first down, although another measurement could be coming. Miller is in. So is Elsby on the stop and Big Tex Colter number 60. Another measurement. first down. Ball on the Alouette 47 yard line. Remember in measuring, it is the nose of that football that counts. Alouettes get lined up after two minutes of play. They kicked off to the Eskimos. The Eskimos have moved down to the Alouette 47. Jackie Parker on a direct handoff hits the left side of his own line. Crosses the 45, is down halfway between the 45 and 40. Juan Sheridan, 64. Ted Elsby, 68. The principal stoppers on it. They have placed the ball down on the 43-yard line. The pickup is four yards, second down and six. Eskimos certainly don't waste any time in the huddle. Maloney's still got that football. He's going to throw. Complete to Parker at the 35-yard line. Make it Lindley, not Parker. 81, not 91. Completed to Lindley. Hunsinger coming up from his defensive spot. Put the stop on him. Eskimo, first down. The ball just inside the 35-yard line. So 
Well, the Eskimos continue to be on the move, and what a beautiful piece of fakery Mr. Filoni pulled that time. I told you about him, Steve. <laughs> oh, you were so right. Miles, the ball carrier. Nice hole opens up. He's almost to the 25-yard line. He is stopped down there by Hunsinger and Bruce Polder, 65, with Jimmy Michener, 83, also in. This is very close to another first down. The split-T operation of the Edmonton Eskimos is, you've got to say right now, giving the Alouettes a bit of trouble, eh? It is on the 26-yard line, second down, two yards to go. Baloney on a quarterback sneak. Maybe he fumbled, but I believe recovered. If so, he's down on the 23-yard line. Juan Sheridan, number 64. First down, Eskimos. They have moved from the 31-yard line on the original kickoff, way down now. First down on the 23-yard line, Alouette's end of the field. Back to Rolly Miles. Pitches intended for, complete to Parker. Great catch by Jackie. And down he goes, and out of bounds, on about the seven-yard line. Man, Parker juggled that one, the same play they executed before so perfectly. And Ted Ellsby, who is playing for the Alouettes in place of Jim Staten, has been in on 90% of the tackles so far. It is first down, goal to go on the seven-yard line. And the Eskimos have moved from about their own 32 all the way down in four consecutive first downs. This is Jackie Parker carrying. Thanks to get away from Hugo. Hugo hits him. He's down on the four-yard line. There's a crowd of about 27,400, roughly, in Varsity Stadium, and I'm sure you can tell from the background they're going just a little bit wacky. It is on the four-yard line. Cecia and Trowick have come in for the Alouettes, as the Alouettes will set up something like an eight-man line on their own four-yard line. Second down, goal to go. Jackie Parker is hit by Ted Ellsby, spins his way for maybe a yard, possibly two. See where the officials say his forward progress was stopped. This will be then third down coming. Dave Price has just reminded me that the Alouette's forward wall, when they pack it, stopped Hamilton successfully from about the same spot. It is third down, three yards to go for a touchdown. Man, this is great excitement so early. Rolly Miles. He's going to be trapped. He's at his own 15. Back to the 20. Still running this way now. He throws a forward pass in the end zone. Completed to Lindley. Miles must have run about a hundred yards. Five nothing in the Grey Cup so early in the ball game. The clock shows five minutes and ten seconds gone by and Dean is trying for his 43rd consecutive convert this season. High pass. It's good. Dean incidentally threw what probably was the key block and it was a bruiser. This is Lindley on your screen right now. The boy who caught that pass thrown by Rolly Miles in the end zone. Jack Wells, I am a, a little bit flabbergasted, out of breath, dumbfounded, and a few other things. What are your reactions? Well, you know, it's, um, it's pretty hard to get excited over a foul like Miles because we've seen him do this sort of thing uh, on numerous occasions in that Western Conference. I've never seen a reverse his field so completely, though, as he did on that particular play. And that uh, tag, or rather that block of Bob Dean, I think was the hardest block we've seen in a long, long time. And I think it was the key block. He, he, he opened it up for uh, Miles to cut around that white side again. That's all the pass. 
Steve, it was said before this game started that if the Eskimos got the ball and started on the ground, they might go. Well, they were so true. They uh, got it on the true, kickoff. eh, Dave? Dean will kick off with the Eskimos. Here we go in action again. Alec Webster on the 11-yard line. At the 25, look at that boy burst. He is up and down on the 37-yard line. And he is gang tackled there. Lippman is one of the men who hit him. Brought him down to earth. And Barry, number 55, also on the stop. Webster from his 11 brought it back to the, well, they called it the 38-yard line. Alouette's first and 10. Ted Tully, number 51, is the man you saw calling defensive signals for Edmonton. Esk's in front, 6 nothing. That is Alec Webster, the ball carrier, number 86, with Briggs coming in to make the stop on him. And he stopped him just about uh, maybe half a yard. About a foot, that's about all you can say. So call it second down and 10 yards to go. Alouette's 38-yard line. Webster is a flanker on this side. Powell goes out on the far side. And Etch will throw. He does. Complete to O'Quinn. He is down for a first down almost at midfield. He's piled up there. Number 87, Bryant is one boy who got him. Briggs is also on the stop. And Rolly Miles coming up from his defensive spot. Sam Etcheberry's first pass of the afternoon. Complete to Red O'Quinn for an Alouette first down. Gee, I don't know. With that start, this is going to be a Lulu. To pull for a gain of almost six or seven yards on the play. Johnny Bright, number 84, defensive back for the Eskimos. And Ted Tully, 51, put the tackle on him. The gain is seven yards. It is second down and three. The ball is on the 49-yard line. Eskimos end of the field. Alouette's possession. We have played uh, six minutes of the first quarter. Edmonton six, Alouette's nothing. Hunsinger's got it. It was deflected. He tries the lateral. It goes out of bounds. Trying to throw to Joey Pell. Apparently the ball was tipped out by the Eskimos. That is the ruling from the field. It goes over to Edmonton on their own 48-yard line. A 10-yard penalty on the play for fumbling into touch, so indicated by referee Hap Scholnice, and an Eskimo first down back on their 38-yard line now. That was tipped out of bounds, uh, uh, Steve, or uh, in a touch, whichever way you want to rephrase it, by an Edmonton player on that uh, wobbly lateral. Hunsinger was trying to toss it to Joey Powell, and an Edmonton arm or hand got in there and tipped it out of bounds. Normie Kwong, the ball carrier, tries the right side of his own line, still going. Hunsinger brings him down to earth on the 48-yard line. So he has picked up almost the first down. There could be a measurement, and I believe there will be. First down, they say. Eskimos possession, first and 10 from their own 48. Well, they took the ball on the opening kickoff and went about 78 yards, that's unofficial, in six first downs for a TD. And they have possession again with Raleigh Miles. A nice hole opened on the left side of the Eskimos line. Maloney faked beautifully to Kwong going into the center, handed off to Miles then, and he picked up about eight yards. Hunsinger from his secondary position came up on the stop. The ball is on the 53-yard line, Alouette's end of the field. It's second down and uh, just about two yards left to go. Jackie Parker dragged down by Virgil Wagner. First down for the Eskimos at the 43-yard line. Tommy Hugo, 48, last man off the bottom of the pile. But Virgil Wagner, number 78, hit him first. Eskimos first and ten, and that ground attack is sure grinding out yardage. Bernie's still got that football. Fires downfield, too hot for Lindley to handle. Roared right through his hands. 
The weather is about uh, 38, 40 degrees, and it's a little nippy on the hands of the football players, especially ends who are trying to receive forward passes. Bernie fired that one like a bullet. See how he boot like that ball, eh? Second down and 10 yards to go for the Eskimos. He's still got it, Filoni. Jump pass. Ooh, man. Hunsinger hit Raleigh Miles. Just at the moment of the football's impact. Filoni threw. They said that boy couldn't throw very well, but uh, he's thrown a couple of beauties. They just didn't click. The first one went steaming through the hands of Lindley. That last one was defensed beautifully by Hunsinger. So there is the first decided break of the football game. Recovery of a fumble so deep in the opposition territory. Loose ball in the backfield, recovered by the Elwick. Ted Elsby, 68, makes the recovery. The lateral pass by Bernie Filoni went badly astray. The only man close to it could not fall in the ball, but big Ted Elsby, who has played a whale of a game, did so, and the Alouettes have recovered, and the tide has turned the other way. The lateral was intended for Raleigh Miles. Well, how do you like them apples, eh? That was more like a basketball pass they were trying to throw out there that time, Steve. This is Virgil Wagner on that pitch out. Loses his footing in the center of the field. Slips down to earth on about the 20-yard line. Picked up maybe two yards in the play. Parker and Tully, principally responsible for the stop, along with Johnny Bright. 84 is Bright. 61 there is Bob Dean. Joey Powell is flanked out on the near sidelines for the Alouettes. Second down and eight. Jump pass to O'Quinn. He's got it. He may be away. He's at midfield. He's being chased by two Eskimos. He's at the 25-yard line. Change of direction. This will be, I think, a TD. It is. A 90-yard touchdown by the Alouettes, showing you, as we have talked before, their explosive power. The play started at the 20-yard line. Jackie Parker hit O'Quinn as he changed direction on about the three-yard line, but Red slithered on his knees over the goal line, and it is Edmonton 6, Alouettes 5, with a conversion attempt by Ray Poole coming up. Man. Etcheberry holes on the 12-yard line. The ball game is deadlocked at six points apiece. Steve, I've never seen two more spectacular touchdowns in a game as important as that. There's Red O'Quinn on the screen now. The man who just made that long 90-yard run. O'Quinn, of course, Jack, was the second top pass receiver in the Big Four this past season. Al Pfeiffer of the Toronto Argonauts was the number one man. And he only ousted O'Quinn in, I believe, the last uh, week or two of the season. But after that uh, gallop, on that little tiny button hook job, jump pass right over the center, what they call the pro pass. He burst into the clear. Three Eskimos tried to get him, and Parker, well, I thought Parker was going to it about the 10-yard line. O'Quinn changed direction and then hit him on the two. The collegiate game is varsity three, Western nothing in the first quarter. Ray Poole will kick off. That is Miles underneath the goalpost, and Dave West, number 97, the last man you saw. End over end to West in the 10 yard line. The 20 is hit there and dragged down on the 24. First man to hit him was Bill Buley, Jacques Villette, 87 on the tackle, and Tommy Moran, number 77. 
Hewley, Pilek, and Moran combined to bring him down on the 24-yard line. Eskimo's ball, first and 10. Well, that tremendous pass play by Echeverry to O'Quinn certainly changed the complexion of the ball game because just a moment before, the Eskimos had recovered a fumble and then Poloni tossed a wild lateral and the Alouettes recovered. Jackie Parker on the direct handoff from Bernie Poloni. Hits the center of the line. He is ganged up there. Jimmy Miller is one man. There he is, 72. 81 is Johnny Blacher. 60, the big guy, Tex Calder, of course. You can count on him being on the bottom of almost any pile. And the same goes for Hugo and Sheridan, 48 and 64, respectively. Having a good look at them right now. That's Wagner, 78, at the bottom of your screen. Normie Kwong, the handoff from Poloni, hits through the center. Calder got him first. Hunsinger came up, and so did Sheridan. And this is very close to a first down. The gain on the first play, which I neglected to give you, was four yards. Now, referee Scholdice says, bring those sticks in and we'll measure. We have approximately four minutes left now of the first quarter. Ball game is tied at six points apiece. Miles to Lindley for a touchdown for the Eskimos, right from the kickoff. That is short by, well, Jack, you say about an inch and a half, eh? That's just about it. I got the glasses on it, Steve, and it's just that short. So it is third down coming. Ball is on the 38-yard line. Nobody goes deep for the Alouettes, figuring that the Eskimos will run, possibly a quarterback sneak by Filoni. Or maybe a handoff to Miles or Kwong. Let's see. Filoni on the quarterback sneak is over the 35-yard line. Piled up there by the center of the line, led by Sheridan and Calder. And number 68, Ted Ellsby. A roughing penalty has been called against Juan Sheridan. On the pileup, tackling Filoni on the quarterback keep play. Roughing penalty. Signaled excessive use of the elbows, says Hap Scholdice, as you saw it, against Juan Sheridan. So the penalty marches the ball up to the 50 yard line. Eskimos possession their territory, first and 10. Normie Kwong. Well, only faked to Miles, but he had given the ball to Kwong. Doug McNichol, from his right end defensive spot, came in, hit him along with John Bleacher and Sheridan. Eagle Keys, the Eskimos' very valuable center man, was injured on the last play. The gain on the play is maybe a yard. It is just about the 51-yard line. Don Barry, number 55, you see him on the right lower corner of your screen now, goes in. He'll replace Keyes if he is taken out of the game, and undoubtedly he will be for at least a short period of time. Seems to be his right leg that was injured. He is going to be helped off the field. There are your Eskimos. 66 is Nelson. 81 is Lindley. 61 is Dean. Just to give you a few numbers that are viewable on the screen. 98 just turned around. Raleigh Miles. Steve, if uh, Eagle Keys is hurt to, uh, badly enough that he'll uh, stay, have to sit out the rest of this game, that uh, will really hamper that Edmonton uh, line considerably because he's a two-way man. He plays offensive and defensively as well. Another oddity about Mr. Keys is that he played for the 1949 Alouettes the last time they won the Grey Cup, and here he is today opposing them. The second down and nine from the 51 Eskimo territory. Their possession. Maloney's still got it. He looks, throws down the center, completed to Bendiak. He is down on the 31-yard line. Chuck Hunsinger, from his defensive position for the Alouettes, got Steve Bendiak, who I believe played mostly defensively this year for the Eskimos, but took a nice direct pass down in the secondary 
and is down for an Eskimo first down on the 32. Referee Hap Schuldice is giving the three-minute signal to both teams on the field. And now to the stands and all officials concerned. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Tie ball game in the 54 Grey Cup. Edmonton six, the Alouette six. With Edmonton on the move, first and ten at the Alouette's 32. McQuinney was the man who went in motion. Ball carrier is Parker, and gee, he drives beautifully down to the 24, where he is met by Virgil Wagner and Juan Sheridan. I would hazard a guess that Sheridan has been on 75% of the Alouette tackles so far. The gain on the play is eight yards. Second down and two from the Alouette's 24. Pong the ball carrier. Should be good for a first down, and man, what a pilot. Sheridan, Jimmy Miller, principal man to hit him there is big number 60, Tex Coulter, and Sheridan, and Elsby was 68, you saw at the corner of your screen. First down for the Eskimos. Alouette's 21 yard line. Tie ball game at six points apiece, about two minutes to go in the first period. Norby Kwong to the 10 yard line, drives down to about the six. Larry Craig hit him down there. That is another first down and goal to go. Bruce Calder, number 65, helped on that tackle, too, deep in the secondary. And you see the Alouettes lining up on the five-yard line. The ball is on the six. And it's the third time in the first quarter the Eskimos have had the ball very deep in Alouette territory. They scored once, lost it the other time on a fumble. Saloni all the way through. He scores! No, sir, wait a minute, hold it. Two officials threw their hands up. Two others are now giving the no-score signal. The ball is about a yard, maybe, short of the goal line. Definitely one, if not two, officials threw their hands up in the air, and two others right near the goal line said no soap on it. Maloney, a beautiful piece of quarterbacking, caught the Alouettes by surprise on a quarterback sneak from that far out, and here is a nice discussion going on right around the goal line. The Alouettes, you may be sure, will pack that goal line. They have seven men, and they'll probably move up to about nine on the goal line. Maloney tries to see. He is over this time. He was stopped, hit hard, finally slithered off and across the last goal mark. Normie Kwong was responsible for helping, I believe, with a little nudge from the side. But Bernie Maloney, on two quarterback sneaks in succession, has moved down. Frankie Morris, former member of the Toronto Argonauts, was mainly responsible for some good blocking, which enabled Filoni to go over. The roughing penalty by the Alouettes, Juan Sheridan, certainly helped that march. High pass from center, Filoni's gonna run. He goes out of bounds to the two yard line, nothing doing. The pass from center from Don Barry was very high. Filoni had no alternative. There's the ex-All-American from the University of Maryland who scored that TD and then tried to run for the conversion. So your scoreboard now shows with still about a minute and a quarter to go in this first quarter. And man, what a quarter. The Eskimos 11, the Alouettes 6. Just a moment ago in front of the Montreal bench, Coach Douglas P. Head Walker had big Jim Staten up on his feet, 
and was talking to him near the sidelines. Tell me, Steve, uh, is Staten injured? Staten had a bad knee from last year and injured his ankle not too long ago and has not played to any extent in the last three or four Alouette games. He probably will come in very shortly. Dean kicks off for the Eskimos. The wind is taking it. May take it out of bounds. Brig on about the 15-yard line, running back. Hit once and ganged up on the 15-yard line. Tully is the man who hit him. First and responsible for making the stop on him. With Hodgson number 50 and Mendrick number 88. The one-minute flag is now up at the sidelines. So we have less than 60 seconds to play. That's the boy calling defensive signals, and there's your play. Jack Wells is going to come in and handle play-by-play -play commentaries for the second and third quarters of this game. Hunsinger is the ball carrier, spins his way up almost to the 20-yard line before he's stopped principally by Ted Tully. Jimmy Weatherall, number 63, was also on the stop. The ball is on the 20-yard line. The gain is almost five yards, so it is second and about five to go. Less than half a minute to play in the first quarter. Sam will heave one. Complete to O'Quinn, who falls down on the 41-yard line. Jackie Parker just made sure. It is an Alouette first down on the 42-yard line. First and 10 with less than half a minute to go in this first quarter. This is the answer to 27,000 odd football fans' prayers today. They see a great ball game. They sure are. <laughs> Sam is nailed back there. Prather is the ball who got him. Roland Prather and number 66, who is Roger Nelson. They nailed him. You don't trap Sam Echeverry too often in the backfield, but those two big boys sure did. Prather is 235. Nelson is 225. He's back to the 28-yard line. Second down, about 24 yards to go. Sam is looking for Hunsinger, throwing deep to him. Chuck had his hands on, defended by Bright and Parker. And the gun has sounded to wrap things up for a hectic first quarter, believe me. And the score at the end of the first quarter is the Edmonton Eskimos 11. Montreal Alouette 6, the Grey Cup game coming to you from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. <laughs> Here's to the everyday things that end up being everything. Here's to all things simple with casual clothing and footwear from Marks. The second quarter of this Grey Cup football game from Varsity Stadium in Toronto with the Edmonton Eskimos in front of the Montreal Alouettes by 11 points to 6 is about to get underway here. So let's hear now from the voice of the West, Mr. Jack Wells. Thank you very much, Steve. And a good, good afternoon, football fans. 11 to 6 in the big one in favor of the Edmonton Eskimos. And we're going into the second quarter. And it'll be Alouette's ball. Third down. And let's see, it's a good uh, 10, 22 yards to go. After uh, Edgerberry was smeared on a pass play and the second play was incomplete. And so uh, the Alouettes in the dark uniforms on your television screen on the left. The safety man for the, uh, for the deep man for the Eskimos will be Davey West and uh, Kruger. There's Davy West, number 87, 97, pardon me. And Kruger is the other deep man. Time in is called. So it is third down and approximately 24 to go. Big Ray Poole, or rather takes Colder. Moves back to do the punting. There's the snap. Gets it away. Man, he puts the boot to it. Here's Davy West taking it on his own 35. Spins off to his right. He's on the 40. And he is brought down. Running right a touch on about the 45. Traurig and uh, Patterson 
Harold Patterson. Sorry, pardon me, number 35 is not out there. Patterson is hurt. Here's an injured player for the Alouettes. And it'll be first and 10 for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 44-yard line. Referee Hap Shoulders is waving the uh, ball on. And as we said a few moments ago, there's an injured Alouette on the play. And we can't identify him for you as yet as there is a group of players around him. As the Montreal Alouettes, 64-1 Sheridan, played a tremendous game in that line for the Alouettes, not only in this one, but they tell me he's had a, a tremendous season, doing a lot of uh, hard tackling for the uh, Eastern champions. And the score is 11-6. The early stages of the uh, second quarter. So, uh, two ball players now have been injured. Eagle Keys of the Edmonton Eskimos was hurt in the first quarter, although we noticed that he was parading up and down in front of the bench uh, earlier, picking out this player for you. The injured player is Big Doug McNichol, that fine defensive end of the Montreal Alouettes, and he is being assisted to the sideline. So it'll be first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 44 after Davey West had returned uh, Tex Polder's punt approximately 10 yards after fumbling it. Eskimos back in the huddle. The Alouettes have a five-man line out there, likely shift into a six-man line. Timing is called. Uh, timeout while uh, Doug McNichol was assisted from the field. It's Barry over the ball for the Eskimos. They go into the T formation. Maloney is the quarterback. And the handoff is given to Rolly Miles. A quick opening play over center. And Miles carries up to about his own 53. Stopped by Larry Gregg, number 87. And uh, it'll be close to the first down. Larry Gregg, uh, check his number there. He is listed as 87 on our program. He's actually 89 out on the ball field. So it is second down. And uh, we're going to have a measurement here. Yard sticks. Uh, They'll be taken out. Hap Schuldice, the referee from Ottawa, as uh, there was a measurement called for by the captain of the Eskimos, uh, Frankie Morris, number 52. Eskimos in the white-colored jerseys on the right of your television screen. Now, uh, there goes the yard sticks. It's about a yard short. It'll be second down and one for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 54, 53. Barry breaks out of the huddle for the Eskimos. Flying wing is uh, Glenn McWhinney. Right half is Rolly Miles, fullback Normie Kwong, left half Jackie Parker, and the quarterback is Bertie Filoni. Second down, one yard to go. And uh, there's Normie Kwong over left tackle. I think he picks up enough yardage for a first down. He gets a nice blocking there. Opening the hole was uh, Barry, center. And uh, DeWitt Calder, better known as Tex Calder, Number 60 for the Alouettes, left tackle, and uh, Ray Bull, number 79, made the tackle. So it is first and 10 for the Evans and Eskimos, dead center, on the 55-yard stride. And the score is 11 to 6 in favor of the Evans and Eskimos over the Montreal Alouettes, playing in the second quarter. And the handoff is given to Normie Kwong, off tackle to his left, and there's no hole there. As it was There's a gain of uh, three yards on the play, so it'll be second down and seven yards to go. The ball now in uh, Montreal territory on about the 53. That's Barry over the ball. Technical difficulties have interrupted picture transmission of the Grey Cup game this morning. Audio is still audible, so we will continue with sound and hope to have picture restored in just a moment. but he elected to throw instead. So it'll be third down and uh, seven yards to go. Big Tom Hugo, he was the uh, all-star center, I believe, in the big four this year, wasn't he, uh, Stan? Steve Brother? Two years in a row. And uh, he backs up the center of the line. He was floating out there with Filoni on that play. Deep man for the Alouette then. Number 93 is Bill 
Bully, Bully, and uh, on the far side, number 82 is Joey Powell. And the deep end. Number 82, Joey Powell. And number 93, Bill Bewley. There's time on his call. We're having a conference. The officials, Hap Scholes of Ottawa, Cliff Rosegrove of Winnipeg, and Seymour Wilson of Hamilton, and Paul Dojak of Regina. And uh, time in is called. It'll be third down and seven to go for the Edmonton Eskimos on the Montreal Alouettes 53-yard line. That's Eagle Keys at center, and he is limping. You can possibly notice it on your television screen. Poloni will kick from his own 45-yard line. There's the snap. Gets the boot away, almost blocked. It's Beauty taking it on the 10. He's trapped up to the 15, and he's brought down about the 16-yard line by Bill Briggs and Jimmy Quatamateo. So it's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on their own 15-yard line. Tom Hugo almost blocked that kick. He was through. And Poloni, who was playing 15 yards behind the center, needed that extra five yards. Get that kick away. Bewley making the catch on the 10, running it up to the 50. Montreal Alouettes in the huddle with Sam the Rifle Etcheberry as the quarterback. And uh, Ted Tully, who is calling the defense for the Edmonton Eskimos. And they uh, shift into a five-man line, 5-4. The flanker is Joey Powell, Etcheberry at quarterback. Here's the pitch out to uh, Webster. Webster down the left side, and he's brought down on about the 18-yard line by Roland Prather, number 74. Webster, Alec Webster, the uh, leading scorer in the Big Four this year, took the pitch out from uh, Sam Etcheberry, carried to the 20, it's a gain of five, it'll be second down and five. 15 yards in from the east sidelines, and the score is 11 to six in favor of the Edmonton Eskimos. The Montreal Alouettes use the orthodox tee. Here is uh, Etcheverry going back to throw, and the pass is incomplete. It was knocked down by Bill Briggs. He got a piece of it. It was intended for um, big John Red Oak Quinn, the boy who went 90 yards for a touchdown in that first quarter. And say we've had two spectacular touchdowns scored in this ball game. Quinn on a short jump pass to carry 90 yards. And Rolly Miles scoring first for the Evans and Eskimos, if you uh, caught us a little late, as he reversed his field and threw a pass into the end zone. So it is that Big Tex Calder back in kick formation. There's the snap back to the six. Calder gets the boot to it. He has a very peculiar stance, and that kick is taken by Davy West on the 50, and he is trapped on about the 54-yard line. Trapped on the 54. Trapped on the 54. Tom Hugo and... Ray Poole for the tacklers, first and 10 for the uh, Edmonton Eskimos on the 55-yard line. 15 yards in from the east sidelines. Uh, Barry is the center, so uh, the strategy then for the uh, Edmonton Eskimos on using Eagle Keys was just to snap that ball back on that uh, uh, quick, uh, on that kick formation. Scores 11 to 6 in favor of the Eskimos. Eskimos over the ball. And here's Poloni pitching out to Rolly Miles. Miles on the option play pass or run. He throws the pass and it is just the marker. He's on the 45. He's on the 40. He's up to the 35. And he's running a touch on the uh, Montreal Alouette 30-yard line. Bleacher finally got to Jackie Parker. Ran him into touch. And uh, for... Uh, the Eastern fans viewing uh, this ball game this afternoon. Now, that is the type of play that uh, the Western sports writers and casters have been talking about with Edmonton, that dangerous uh, play of the option play. Dave Price and uh, Steve Douglas were just pointing out to me, too, that it's the third time they've used that play successfully. So it's first and ten for the Eskimos on the uh, Montreal Alouette 30-yard line. Loney. Using that split T now, here's the pitch to uh, Parker, there's the throw, and it is incomplete. Intended for Lindley on the one. Takes Calder, or rather Bruce Calder, number 65, was the uh, pass defender. He tipped it away from Lindley, who scored the one of the two touchdowns the Eskimos have picked up. So it'll be second down and ten to go. Going in for the um, Eskimos, number 51 is Tully, and coming out, number 52, Frankie Morris. 
I think this is Frankie Morris's fifth Grey Cup final. It was the second with the um, Edmonton Eskimos, and I think it was in three with the Toronto Argonauts. So it's Barry over the ball. The flanker is a shade wide to the right. You can't quite see him on your screen. That's McWinney. And uh, here's the keeper play with Poloni bootlegging that ball. There's the pitch, and uh, Lindley can't hang on to it. He was being covered by Charlie Hudsinger. It's going to be third. Third down and 10 to go for the Edmonton Eskimos on the Montreal Alouettes 30. Score is 11 to 6 for the Eskimos playing in the second quarter. Now Eagle Keys limps out onto the field. And if you were the quarterback here and you had a placement kicker like Bob Dean, would you try for a field goal? Coming off is Rolly Miles. Also Barry. It's going to be third down and 10 to go for the Edmonton Eskimos on the uh, Alouette 30. They have the, um, the Eskimos have the advantage of uh, the wind. I don't know just what the velocity is. <coughs> so it is going to be an attempted placement by Bob Dean, number 61. He'll kick from about the 37-yard line. Safety man is deep. There's the kick. There goes the ball. And it's in there for three points. Bob Dean kicking one from the 37-yard line to make the score. 14, 14 to 6. Man, that was quite a boot test, Steve. Jack, it was particularly, and I'm enjoying it for one reason, that Bob Dean also played at the University of Maryland. And when the Edmonton team landed here the other night, I said, Bob, how does it happen that you've run up 42 consecutive conversions plus a lot more field goals than you used to kick at Maryland. And he said, don't forget that the goalposts here are on the goal line and not 10 yards behind, and I love it. <laughs> well, uh, in the pro ball in the States, they're right on the goal line, I believe, uh, Steve, are they not? Okay, it's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on their own 35. There's uh, Etcheberry staying in the pocket. The pass is down the middle and it's intercepted. By Bill Bragg, Bragg was trapped and brought down on the 41. Herb Trowick brought Briggs down. And that's the first interception of the ball game. So it is first and ten for the Evans and Eskimos on the Montreal Alouettes 42-yard line. And Bill Briggs, who has uh, been something of a pass interceptionist uh, in the Western Conference the past two or three years, got one in the key spot just now. 14 to 6 for the Eskimos over the Montreal Alouettes. First and 10 for the Eskimos. There's Barry over the ball. Montreal using a six man line. There's Baloney using that split T now. Pitch back to uh, Parker. Parker passes and it's uh, incomplete. Intended for Rolly Miles and uh, Virgil Wagner came up uh, to knock it down. So it is second. Second and 10 for the Eskimos. 74 there, walking towards your screen of the Alouettes. That's Doug McNichol, who uh, is back in the ball game. He was shaken up earlier. McNichol, they tell me, has played a... has had a tremendous season on that right defensive end for the Alouettes this year. He's a Canadian boy. Man, he's big. Goes in around 230, I believe. When you're hit by a fellow that size, you're hit. Second down, 10 to go. Eskimos ball. Blanker is to the right. And the backfield goes off in motion to the left. Here's the opening play over center to Rolly Miles. Miles up to the 30, and he is uh, trapped on the 30-yard line. Has a handkerchief here or a flag on the play. Jim Michener finally nailed uh, Miles up on the 30, and uh, it's an offside against the Edmonton Eskimos. The play is nullified. It's going to be brought back to the point of scrimmage, which is on the uh, Montreal Alouette 42. As Sam Echeverry, he can either ask for a, a measurement or the opposing captain, uh, Ted Tully, he can as well. It's the body yard short for first down. It'll be second down and one for the Montreal Alouettes. Pull back is Wagner. And the pitch out is to uh, Webster, and he's up to the 25, up to the 27-yard line. Taken out by... We'll see. And it'll be first and ten for the Montreal Alouettes on their own 27. Score is 14 to 6 for the 
Edmonton Eskimos. Six minutes gone in the uh, second quarter. The right ball, hands off to uh, Virgil Wagner, off tackle to his right, and he's brought down by Lindley. After a gain of close to five, it's up to about the 32-33. It's better than a five-yard gain. Number 81 is Earl Lindley, who scored one of the two touchdowns the Eskimos have picked up. That's a six-yard gain. It'll be second down and four to go. On their own, 33. Now Echeverry stays in the pocket. He's going to pass down the middle, and it's a great one-handed catch by Webster. And he really hauled that one in. Up to the 50. Briggs. Bill Briggs nailed him on the 50-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes. And they're trailing by a score of 14 to 6. But they made a downfield march to their own 50 from their own uh, two-yard line where Bill Bewley received a Poloni's kick. Blank and Joy Palace to the left. Here is uh, Edinger. Uh, Edgerberry, rather, in the pocket. Now he peels out, and he's up to the 55. He's brought down on the Edmonton Eskimo 52-yard line by King, Mike King, and Roland Prather. They tell me this Edgerberry is not afraid to take off when he gets out of that pocket, and there is. Edgerberry was shaking pretty hard there. He was a little slow getting up. It's a gain of eight yards. It'll be second and two. Ball is on the Edmonton Eskimo 52-yard line. Montreal using that uh, orthodox tee, and the handoff is given to Hunsinger, the right half, and he carries up to the 40, 46-yard line for a first down. Stopped by Briggs and uh, Roger Nelson. It's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes. And they're on the move. They're on the march. Playing in the second quarter. First and 10 for the Alouettes. Joey Powell flanks to the right. Huntinger is wide to the right. Here's Echeverry in the slot. There's the throw. And good to O'Quinn. O'Quinn is brought down on the 30 as he makes the catch simultaneously with the tackle by Roley Miles. So it's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes as uh, Echeverry. Thread of the needle to uh, Red O'Quinn. Man, that O'Quinn can catch. 14 to 6 in favor of the Evans and Eskimos playing in the second quarter. First and 10 for Montreal on their own 30. Somebody's hurt. Timeout is called. It's Mike King who's taking a breather. And the time is called. Mike King coming to the sidelines. That goes Bill Zock in number 62. Zock is possibly one of the truly great veterans of Canadian football. This is his 19th season in. Uh, Major League Football. And it is Mike King who is coming to the sidelines. So Zock goes in on that uh, right treasury. Time in his call. First and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on the Edmonton Eskimo 30. Flanking wide to the right is Hunsinger. And here's the pitch out to Webster. Webster gets a nice blocking. And uh, Poole is doing the blocking. And he's brought down on the 25. Gets up and starts to go again. Ray Poole blocking from that to left end spot. Doing a nice key block for uh, the ball carrier. And Lindley finally brought him down. It's a gain of five yards. It'll be second down. Second down and uh, five yards to go. A little better than five again. Let's make it a six yard game with four to go. Montreal Alouette fans are suiting it up here. Here's the pitch out to, to Hunsinger. Hunsinger waiting wide to his right. He's on the 30. That's Miles after him. He's on the 25. He's brought down on the 20 by Wilsey. Very close to that first down marker. Looked like Hunsinger was trapped there on a couple of occasions. And uh, Hunsinger was hurt on that last play. So timeout is called. And gives us a chance to review the score with the Edmonton Eskimos leading the Montreal Alouettes by a score of 14 to 6. How much time we got left in this quarter, Steve? About uh, six and a half minutes unofficially to the end of the first half. And the Alouettes very definitely, Jack could ill afford to lose the services of the former University of Florida and Chicago Bears star, Chuck Hunsinger. He went roaring down the sidelines there and came awfully close, as you called it, to a first down. 
and he was racked up apparently on the tackle. Well, right now, I would say that 27,000, and I think the official count is 321 over the 27,000 mark, fans at Varsity Stadium, under almost ideal conditions for football, are having themselves a great time. Chuck is up on his feet and being helped to the Alouette bench, and I imagine he will be back in action before too long goes by. Certainly all Alouette supporters, Jack, would hope that. Who will be playing in that right half spot, then, if uh, Hunsinger's uh, injured, uh, Steve? Probably Bill Bewley, and I think I see number 93 in the Alouette backfield right now, and that is Bewley. Now the, um, they're bringing out the yardsticks again for this measurement. It's so close, they've got the whole stick down there. And that's uh, referee Hap Shouldice moving uh, towards the Montreal uh, line. Ball is placed on the 20. And it is third down and less than a yard to go. Julie is playing in that uh, right half spot. He's number 93. It's on the uh, keeper play with Etcheberry carrying. He may have picked up that necessary first down. And they're waving the yardsticks on. It's first and ten for the Montreal Alouettes. On the Edmonton Eskimos, 19-yard line. Etcheberry on the keeper play. Got some uh, nice blocking there by Ray Cecilia, number 51. Little Flower, as he is referred to, and Montreal Alouette back at ball club. New ball is being put into play. So Ted Tully calls the defensive setup for the Eskimos. And they're using something like a six-man line, seven-man line with um, Wright pointing out deep. That's Bewley flanking wide to the left in the half spot. Here's the pitch out to Wagner, Virgil Wagner, and he hits over center up to the 14-yard line where he's stopped by King. And the Alouettes are in um, a good spot to do any placement kicking that is required if a drive should bog down, but they haven't lost the possession of the ball since uh, Bewley made the catch on his own two. And they've marched all the way down the field, down to the Edmonton Eskimos 14-yard line. Uh, Joey Powell flanks out to the left, and here's that Javeri staying in the pocket. The pass is down the middle, and it's a great catch by Red O'Quinn over the goal line. Catch is on the one. Did you see that catch? Here's O'Quinn. Number 73. What a catcher this boy is. He hauls him in like an outfielder. So the score is Edmonton 14, Montreal 11. And a conversion here by Ray Poole. Led to uh, peel off that uh, score. Going back in for the Alouettes is John O'Quinn. And Ray Poole is almost automatic on these converts. It's good. And there's a two-point difference. As uh, the Montreal Alouettes score. Here's Red O'Quinn on the screen. His second touchdown of the ball game. You may recall in the earlier part of this game, he went 90 yards on a jump pass. And gave Montreal their first touchdown. And he went up in the air and pulled that last one down like an outfielder. Well, Jack, the drive in this case in which the Alouettes sustained it all the way down the field was good for 100 yards with uh, Mr. O'Quinn scoring the TD, so he hasn't done too badly this afternoon, eh? <laughs> That's a nice piece of real estate, no matter how you look at it. So the score is 14-12 to 12 in favor of the Montreal Alouettes playing in the second quarter with six minutes remaining in this uh, period. And the ball is being placed on the 45. Ray Poole will do the kicking. And the safety man or the deep man for the Alouette, or rather for the Edmonton Eskimos, will be Harry Lipman, Rolly Miles, and Jackie Parker. Parker closest in the corner there, number 91. That's Rolly Miles, 98. Time in is called. Here comes uh, Ray Poole up. That's a short kick. And it's taken by Normie Kwong. Kwong is on his own 40, and he's brought down on about the 44. Normie Kwong, taken out by... Ray Poole. So it's first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 45-yard line. Looks like a deliberate short kick there, Steve. Jack, they've done that a great many times during the Big Four season, and you may expect to see it quite a few more times this afternoon, I do believe. First and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos. Barry over the ball. Polonian quarterback. Flanker is the McWinney. And the handoff is given to Normie Kwong. He dives over center. A dive play. 
up to the 52-yard line. He pulled down by Johnny Blacher. It's a gain of seven yards, so it'll be second down and three. Second down and three yards to go for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 52. There's number 55 breaking out of the huddle. That's uh, Barry replacing the injured Eagle Keys. Maloney barking out those signals, and the handoff is given to Jackie Parker over right tackle, number 91. And he's stopped by Sheridan and Tex Calder. And it's a first down for the Edmonton Eskimos on the Montreal Alouettes 53-yard line. So the Eskimos are trying to start a drive of their own. Number 74 on your screen there for the Alouettes. That's uh, Doug McNichol, the right defensive end. Now it's Barry over the ball. Eskimos using that split T. And it's Normie Kwong, number 95. There's no hole there. The left side of that Edmonton line was really holding. And Kwong thrown back. And it'll be second down. It's a gain of about one yard. Big Tex Calder and uh, Jimmy Miller, number 72, is Miller. And 60 is Tex Calder. So it is second down and uh, nine yards to go. Three, five minutes to play in this quarter. There's the official five-minute whistle, which is a new ruling in uh, Canadian football this year. Five-minute warning whistle at the end of the second and fourth quarters. Eskimos break the huddle. Loney hands off uh, to uh, Roly Miles, and it didn't work. That Coulter and the state really moving in on it. And Miller, so it is a gain of one yard, will be third down. And the safety man for the Alouettes, Bailey, uh, brother Bewley, and, uh, and Joey Powell. There's Bewley, number 93. And uh, Joey Powell, number 82. Maloney will kick from his own 45-yard line. He's a good 15 yards behind the center. There's the snap. Gets the ball away, and he's really put the boots to this one. And Bewley takes it on his own goal line. He's on the 5, gets up to the 10, up to the 15, and he's brought down on the 18-yard line. By Barry. That kick of Maloney's went 63 yards in the air. So it is first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on about their own 19. Not quite to the 20. And the score is 14 to 12, playing in the second quarter. 14 to 12 in favor of the Edmonton Eskimos. First and 10 for Montreal. This is the big one of the season. Four minutes to play. Flankers wide to the left. There's the pitch out to Virgil Wagner, and he's hit hard as he comes through by Johnny Bright. And there's Bright cut in from that. He's backing up the corner of the right corner of that line. Bright and Tully. So it is a gain of uh, three yards. It'll be second down and seven. The ball is on about the 23-yard line. Montreal's 23. Alouette's use that open huddle. Webster and Powell flank wide to the left. Uh, Wagner in motion. And here's that Javeri going to pass. He can't find a, a receiver. He takes off. He's on the 25. And he's brought down on about the 28. Sam the rifle at Javeri. A down by Lindley, Earl Lindley, and it's close to a first down. Say this at Javeri is a running quarterback. In other words, if uh, he can't spot a receiver in the clear, he'll uh, run with the ball. Timeout is called. And it'll be about uh, third down and about one. The ball is on about the Montreal 29-yard line. There's Hugo over the ball. They're going to run it. There's the pitch out, and uh, it's over to Webster. Webster makes up the first down. Dive play over the uh, right side of the Edmonton line. Picks up about four yards. Stopped by Wilsey. So it's first and ten for the Montreal Alouettes. On their own, 33. Both these clubs are gambling today. In other words, on those uh, third down plays where the yard or two to go, they're both going. Both teams are going for it. Double flankers to the left. Hunsinger and Pal, there's the pitch down the middle and it's taken by Poole. He's on the 45, he's up to about the 48-yard line before he's stopped by Bright and uh, Jackie Parker. So it's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes. And Etcheverry 
as threading the needle. He's going along the clothesline, as they say. This time he uh, threw to Poole, Ray Poole, instead of John O'Quinn. First and 10, Montreal Alouettes on their own 48-yard line. Three minutes to play in the half. Alec Webster flanks wide to the right for 86. Can't see him on your screen right now. Here is Etcheverry staying in the pocket. Here's the lateral over to Hunsinger. He's on the 45. He's on the 50. He's brought down by on the 53 by Lindley on the Montreal Alouette 53. It's a gain of three yards. It'll be second down and seven. That flat pass went from Etcheverry to Hunsinger. Saw it is second down. And seven yards to go. About a three-yard gain. Fifteen yards in from the west sideline. Edmonton are using five-man line now. Where's the Bright? Well back. There's the flat pass to pull again, and he's hit as he makes the catch by Johnny Bright. And it's the first down on the Edmonton Eskimo 50-yard line. Johnny Bright, who was a great offensive star with the Calgary Stampeders until he was racked up by injuries, has been used almost entirely as a defensive back for the Edmonton Eskimos this year. Number 84, you can see him right at the top of your screen there. He's uh, floating out. Stop those wide plays, if you'll notice. Now it's Etcheverry staying in the box. He's got to rush it. Gets the flat pass away to Wagner. Wagner is brought down on the 50-yard line. There's going to be a loss of about a yard. Tully. Tug Wagner's feet from under him on a dive block. And it'll be second down and about 11 yards to go. 15 yards in from the east sideline. Two minutes remaining in the first half. And the score is 14 to 12 for the Edmonton Eskimos. And we have a ball player who was shaken up. And I believe it was Jackie Parker who was still down on one knee. It is Parker, number 91. He's coming to the sidelines. He'll have to come out for at least one play. Going in for the Eskimos, number 97, is Davy West. Going in as a defensive back. Jack, you're talking about uh, Johnny Bright, a great offensive star at Drake University and also with Calgary playing a bang-up defensive game today. Let's not overlook a fellow named Earl Lindley, who was high scorer in the United States last year with the Utah Aggies and today has made about 50% or more of your Edmonton tackles. He's been uh, a standout on defense, and he also caught that touch, one of those touchdown passes, too. There's the open huddle of the Montreal Alouettes. Sam Echeverry calling the signal, the rifle, as he is referred to. Number 92. They break out of the huddle. It's uh, second down and 11 to go, using the uh, T. And uh, the shift is to the right. Here's Echeverry going back to throw. There's a long one. And it's incomplete. It's going to be a flag on the play. Interference is called against Ray Wilsey. And the pass will be ruled complete on the 25. On the Edmonton Eskimo 25, it'll be first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on the Edmonton Eskimo 25-yard line on a pass interference play against Ray Wilsey. Wilsey was an um, all-star defensive back in the Western Conference. And he's been out of action for the past few weeks with a broken uh, arm. Flanking to the right is Alec Webster. And Joy Powell is uh, the flanker on the right. Now here's Etcheverry in the box. He's almost, he's brought down by Prather. And there was a fumble. Fumble on the play. Prather hit Etcheverry. Caused him the fumble. Etcheverry may have recovered his own fumble. And we'll wait and see it. Second down. Etcheverry recovered the fumble as uh, Prather. Barreled in, number 74 is from that right end. There he is, touching his helmet now. Banking out to the left is Joey Powell. 14 to 12. And the, is Echeverry in the box again. And there's the pitch, and it is good to Red O'Quinn. He carries up to the 10, up to about the eight-yard line. Placed up by Jackie Parker. O'Quinn hooks in from that right end to make a spectacular catch again. So Montreal are threatening, and the minute flag is up for the first half. And uh, now the Alouettes will be fighting the clock as well. So it's uh, first and goal to go for the Montreal Alouettes on about the eighth. Webster flanks wide, and uh, here is the pitch out to Hunsinger. He's on the five. He's getting some good blocking, and he's over for a touchdown. 
Doesn't like crowd roar. So the Montreal Alouettes go to the front for the first time in the ball game. And the score, Montreal Alouettes 17, Edmonton Eskimos 14. With time running out in the first half of the ball game, that wide run going for the big points, and now Ray Poole will go for the convert. Poole, number 79, while uh, Etcheverry will hold. Here's the snap. There's the kick, and the, the point is good. And the score in favor. Here's the Hunziger uh, who scored that last touchdown for the Montreal Alouettes on your screen now. And the Montreal Alouettes in almost the last seconds of play in the first half score a converted touchdown to uh, go to the front by a score of 18 to 14. Montreal Alouettes 18. Edmonton Eskimos 14, and the minute flag is up, so there's less than a minute to play. The Eskimos will receive, and the safety man, the Lettman, Ben Lettman, number 95, Rolly Miles, 98, and uh, Davey West, number 97. Ray Paul will do the kicking, kicking from his own 45. Remember, on these kickoffs, it's a free ball. Everybody's on side. There it is, another one of those short kicks, and it's taken. Bob Bendiak, he's on his own 40, uh, up to the 45, front down on about the 50 by Virgil Wagner and Ray Poole. So it's first and 10 for the Eskimos on their own 50-yard line, and they still have time for at least one play. As the minute flag is still up down the sidelines here. First and 10 for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 50. Barry breaks the huddle. Montreal go into a six-man line, 6-1, six and they're defending with that umbrella pass defense as here's Poloni pulling out of the pocket. There's the pass, and it is incomplete. Intended for flanker Glenn McWinney, and he was being covered by Charlie Hunsinger. So it'll be second down, and 10 to go. Notice that Montreal defense, uh, they throw up an umbrella defense on this particular sequence because uh, with time uh, almost out in the first half, the Eskimos uh, naturally have to gamble. They're trying for those long ground-gaining plays. So the Montreal Alouettes line is a 5-2. That's Barry out of the huddle. Eskimos over the ball. Flanking wide to the right is Glenn McWinney, number 93. Has the entire backfield in motion. Maloney being rushed on this play. Gets some blocking. There's the pass, and it is good. Up to the 40 of Bendiak, and he charges up to about the 32-yard line. He's stopped by Johnny Blacher. And the flag is still up. And so they still have time for another play. It's first and 10 for the Edmonton Eskimos on the Montreal Alouette 32. Going in is Bill Zock and Eagle Keys. Eagle Keys is limping into that uh, ball game on a bad left angle a ankle. And uh, second guessing here will say that Bob Dean may try a placement. That's what's going to happen. He'll kick from the 38, 39 yard line. There's the snap, there's the kick, and it's taken on the goal line. It's not good, it's on the five, Hunziger on the five, and he's grounded on about the six as the gun sound to end the second, the first half of the ball game. And the score at the end of the first half of this great cup game from Varsity Stadium in Toronto is Montreal 18, the Edmonton Eskimos 14. 18 to 14 in favor of the Montreal Alouettes. Come the Edmonton Eskimos out of their dressing room.
both teams have been in their huddles down below us here. We're located, as you know, on the press box on the west side of Varsity Stadium. The wind is picked up in velocity somewhat. It's coming sort of from the southwest. It's rather a cool, damp wind. But I haven't seen anybody leaving the park yet, believe me. This second half should be one of the greatest. So many of the experts have always thought and have said so this year that it was anticlimactic, the Grey Cup final, but certainly not this year. And now, if uh, he can get his eyes off those drum majorettes and off that Alouette band, here's Jack Wells to bring it to play-by-play -play of the third quarter of today's Grey Cup game between the Edmonton Eskimos and the Montreal Alouettes from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Jack? Thank you very much, Uncle Dave. Well, I'd just like to add my uh, word of praise to this uh, marching band of the Montreal Alouettes and the drum majorettes. I've been coming down to this Grey Cup final ever since 1941, and believe me, this is the, the, the most, as the Hepcats say, as far as halftime entertainment is concerned. That's a real organization, that marching band. Well, uh, the um, Montreal Alouettes will kick off to the Edmonton Eskimos as Kruger, Western Miles are the deep men, and uh, Big Ray Poole will do the bunting for the uh, Montreal team. And the score is 18 to 14 in favor of the Montreal Alouettes. Now we've had a switch here, and uh, there's something that uh, was forgotten. We haven't got a football. <laughs> so I think this one of those things is necessary to get this ball game underway. The deep men, Lipman, Kruger and uh, West for the for the Edmonton Eskimos. Ray Poole now uh, placing the ball on the uh, Montreal Alouettes 45 yard line. A four point spread as we go into the second and crucial half of uh, this uh, great ball game here. Man, we've had a lot of excitement. And Poole still uh, fixing that ball, getting ready to go. He's a big fella. About 240. Time in is called. Here's the kickoff. It's a long end over end kick. Taken by Lipman on his own five. Lines up behind his blocking. He's on the 10, 15, the 20, up to the 25. And he's brought down on about the 28-yard line by Mitchner and uh, Tom Moran, number 77. So it's first and 10 for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 28-yard line. Four-point difference here. I'm in his call. Let's have a look at that Montreal defense. They're going into a five-man line, 5-3. Five, it's Barry over the ball for the Eskimos. Polonia quarterback. And the handoff is given to Normie Kwong, off tackle to his right. And he carries for about five yards before he's stopped by Johnny Blacher. Number 81, and it'll be second down. Blacher and Juan Sheridan, number 64, also in on the tackle. It's again a five, so it'll be second down and five yards to go for the Eskimos on their own 30, about their own 34. McWinnie is the flying wing to the left. There's Poloni on the keeper play now, stays in there. There's the throw down the middle, and it's intercepted by Hugo. And uh, he's on the 42-yard line, 47-yard line. Man, that was a nice tackle. An army Kwong, he took off on Hugo. Has Hugo intercepts the pass. That's the second interception of the day. Hugo Jack is a great pass interceptor for the Alouettes. He nabbed six during the Big Four season. And I believe one in the playoffs. So that'd be a total of eight for him this season of 1954. And he got one at a very tight spot in this ball game, and it gives Montreal the ball on the Edmonton Eskimos 47 yard line. Running in now for the Eskimos. Hayton got in on defense. And here's the pitch out. There's a double in the backfield, and it's recovered by, Eskimo, by the Montreal Alouettes. That's Webster with the ball. And he's running a touch by uh, Lindley. Earl Lindley. There was a traffic jam in that uh, Montreal backfield, but uh, Webster recovered. He's the left half. And made uh, about five yards on the play, so it'll be second down and five. The ball is on the Edmonton Eskimos 39-yard line. Ted Tully calling the defense for the uh, Eskimos. Two wide men here in the swing. There's the pitch, and it's intercepted by Edmonton. Intercepted by Johnny Bright. 
Antenna for Ray Poole, and it's Eskimo ball. Jim Staten brought right down with a tackle. Number 63 there is Jim Weatherall, you see on the screen. And it's first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 38-yard line. So it's uh, first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos against the Montreal Alouettes. Alouettes going into a five-man line, 5-3-3. Five, 5-4, three, three. Five, now they switch to a six-man line. And Poloni fakes the handoff, and it's given to Roly, <coughs> to Lippman, rather. Glenn Lippman, and he uh, bobbled it, brought down by uh, Doug McNichol. Crashing end, and there's a loss on the play. So uh, the uh, early portion of this third quarter has a marked similarity between the two teams. They both had traffic jams in the backfield, and they have both had pass interceptions. So it is uh, second down and 12 yards to go for Edmonton on their own 36. And in motion, here's a handoff to Glenn Lippman, taken off to his right, gets a nice blocking, cuts in, and he carries up to the 45, up to about the 47. It's Virgil Wagner, number 78. Finally brought the ta- brought him down, and Bruce Calder had a piece of that tackle. So it's close to first down for the Edmonton Eskimos. It'll be third down and about two yards to go. The ball is on the Eskimos 47. Now Eagle Keys is going into the ball game. Pick him up on your screen there. You can see that he is limping with a bad ankle. And uh, Coach Frank Ivey is sending in his kicking squad. In other words, Keys will snap the ball back to Poloni on a third down with two to go. The safety men will be Bewley and uh, Joey Powell. Powell closest to you. Bewley on the far side. Bewley number 93. Poloni will kick from his own uh, 32. As a snap. As the kick, he puts it to it. And it's taken on the 35 by Hunsinger. Hunsinger is hit on the dead run back to the 30 by Lindley. This Lindley is playing himself a real ball game for the Edmonton Eskimos in this one. The score is 18 to 14 in favor of Montreal. Montreal in possession on their own 32-yard line. So it's first and 10, Montreal. Four-point spread, 18 to 14. And a thriller here at Varsity Stadium, the final football game of the year in Canada. So the Alouettes break the huddle. Hunsinger's the right half, and there's the pitch out to Hunsinger. Lines up behind his blocking, gets some great blocking by Poole, and he picks up five, he cuts in, he's up for ten, he's on the 40. Up by uh, Wilsey. Ray Wilsey runs him into touch on about the 41 of the near that 10-yard marker. The ball is pitched in from the sideline. Calder getting some real fine blocking in there for Hunsinger. So it is a gain of uh, eight yards, nine yards, second down, and uh, one to go. That was a wide pitch off play from uh, San Marai Palacioberry. And the handoff is to Webster, who tries center and uh, carries for at least one yard, where he's stopped by Bill Briggs, number 42. What a pile up along the line. Mike King, number 82. And uh, Montreal needed only a one yard for first down. They picked up one and one to go with it. So it's first and ten for the Alouettes on their own 44. Edmonton shift into a seven-man line. And they're missing Eagle Keys, who is the center linebacker, and out with injuries. Here's that pro pass over the line, and it is complete. Incomplete. It was intended for Ray Poole. I couldn't quite see it because Poole's back was towards me. And it's incomplete. Knocked down by Tully. Tully had him covered, so it'll be uh, second down and ten. Second and ten for the Montreal Alouettes. Their own 44-yard line. That's Tully calling the defense for Edmonton. They go into the six-man line, 6-3. Here's the uh, two-man spread to the left for uh, Echeverry. Echeverry has to hurry, and he's brought down by Prather, who got a piece of him. And then he was smeared from that left end by Weatherall, left tackle. And there's a loss of five yards on the play, so it'll be third down 
and 50 to go, and Coach Peahead Walker sends in his kicking squad. Dropping back in safety for the uh, Eskimos is Kruger and uh, Davy West. And uh, Tex Fuller will kick from his own 25. There's a snap. It was almost blocked. Ah, but he put his foot to it. Mendrick almost got through to it. And here is West taking it on his own 20. On the 25. He's hit on the 25 and carries to about the 28. Grace Asia, little flower, number 51. Leveled off on West. Brought him down. So it's first and ten for the Eskimos on their own 28. 18 to 14 is the score in favor of the Montreal Alouettes over the Edmonton Eskimos playing in the third quarter of the Grey Cup final here at Varsity Stadium. That's Tom Hugo calling the defense for Montreal. You go into the six-man line, 6-3. Poloni at quarterback, and the reverse is given to Lipman, who's playing right half and plays with Jackie Parker. And he goes for three yards before he's stopped by Miller, Jim Miller, for 72. So it'll be second down and seven to go. Ball is now on the Edmonton Eskimos 31-yard line. Four-point difference here between these two great ball clubs. Can't recall a great cup final when we've had so many spectacular touchdowns. McWinney is flanking out to the right on the flying wing. That's Lippin at left half. Maloney at quarterback. The handoff is to Normie Kwong. Off tackle to his right. He finds a big ball and goes up to the 43-yard line before uh, Tex Holder brings him down. There's a man hurt. It's uh, McNichol, I believe, who was shaken up on that last play. Number 63 there on your screen for the Montreal Alouettes is Jim Staten. Right tackle. And again... It's McNichol who is hurt. And the score is 18 to 14 in favor of the Alouettes over the Edmonton Eskimos. It'll be first and 10 for the Eskimos on their own 42 yard line after Normie Kwong knifed off of left tackle. Here comes McNichol to the sideline. Great ball player. So uh, Montreal shift into a five-man line, 5-4 five defense here. Almost that umbrella pass defense. Flankers to the left at McWinney. And uh, here's the handoff to uh, Wally Miles. Up to Kruger, pardon me. Kruger carries that up for a first down. Goes for 13 yards. Kruger playing in that right-hand slot in place of Rolly Miles. And it was Bruce Coulter. Number 65, who made the tackle. So uh, Frank Harvey has gambled in this uh, third quarter with the uh, two rookie backs in Lippmann and Kruger. The only veteran then is the fullback, Donnie Kwong. McWinney is flanking uh, to the right. And the handoff is given to Donnie Kwong, and he carries for five yards up to the uh, Montreal 50-yard line. He's stopped by Johnny Blacher, number 81. Also in for a piece of the tackle is 63, Jim Staten. Here's Staten coming to the sideline. So it is second down and five to go after uh, Kwong. Ground up five over left tackle. Montreal using a spread line on defense. Flankers to the left for the Eskimos. Baloney barking out those signals, and here's the head. There's a fumble by Kruger, and we'll see who's got it. Kruger fumbled, and he may have recovered. Kruger fumble when he was hit by Tex Calder and Ray Poole. When you get hit by Calder and Poole, well, I guess you can't uh, blame a fella for fumbling. Man, they're big. Joey Powell and uh, Bill Buley will be the deep men, safety men. Buley number 93, Joey Powell then number 82. Maloney will kick from uh, his own 49. It was almost blocked there by a charge again by Hugo. And here's Joey Powell taking on the 15. Up to the 20. Fumble. Everybody's after it. And we can't see who's got it on the foul. It's recovered by the Edmonton Eskimo. McLeod, I believe. Ray McLeod recovered that fumble. Oh, 
with your car. Don't take chances with boil-away antifreeze. Get Prestone antifreeze. Here's Filoni handing off to uh, Norm Mc uh, Lippin, Glenn Lippin, number 85. And uh, Lippin dives over. Carries up to the Edmund, uh, to the Montreal 23-yard line. It's a gain of four yards. Johnny Bleacher brought him down. So here is uh, Barry over the ball. Three po Four-point difference here. Flanker is to the left for... Uh, the Eskimos. Maloney finding a hole for uh, Glenn Lippman again. Carries it up to the about the 20 yard line. It'll be third down and about two yards to go for the Eskimos. And it'll be third and two. Ball is on the just over the 20 yard line. In a position for a field goal if they keep it down the center. 18 to 14. Montreal going into a seven-man line. Third down, they're going to gamble on a third down play here. There's a fumble by Filoni. He recovers, but it'll be Montreal ball for failing to make the necessary yardage. Filoni. Filoni recovered that loose ball in the Edmonton backfield on the handoff to Glenn Lippman. And so it's first and ten for the Montreal Alouettes on the on their own 23-yard line. Getting a little colder here at Varsity Stadium and it's possibly having an effect on those ball players as well because we've had uh, two fumbles in this quarter. Sam Echeverry at quarterback. And Echeverry hands off to Hunsinger. Hunsinger off tackle to his left, cuts up to the 25, up to the 30. The 35, he's running a touch on about the 41-yard line. Eight, number 94 for the uh, Eskimos, runs them into touch, and it'll be first and ten for Montreal on their own 40. Montreal leading by a score of 18 to 14. First and ten for Montreal, you go into the T formation. There's that jump pass to O'Quinn again, who cuts in on that hook play and carries up the center. And he's pulled down on the Edmonton Eskimo 52-yard line by Johnny Bright. This Quinn hooks in from that right end. He's put on a brilliant display of catching. And that play went for 90 yards earlier in the ball game and the first Montreal touchdown. Time is called as Roger Nelson, number 66, was shaken up. And uh, McLeod, Ray McLeod will go in for the Eskimos. 14 point, a four point difference, 18 to 14 for the Montreal Alouettes playing in the third quarter. Five, six minutes remaining in this quarter. And uh, here is uh, Roger Nelson coming to the sidelines. Apparently had the wind knocked out of him and doesn't appear to be in too bad shape. So it's first and ten for Montreal on the Edmonton Eskimo 52. And the handoff is to Webster. Off tackle to his right. He finds a big hole over right tackle. And really plow. Ooh, he was under it. Jackie Parker brought him down on the Edmonton Eskimo 34-yard line. That Webster really exploded on that play over right tackle. Herb Trawick, veteran of many Montreal games, leading the blocking. Flankers to the left, Joey Powell. Here's the pitch out to Webster. Webster takes off, cuts in, he falls, still picks up enough yardage, and is brought down by Mike King as he carries up to the, about the 27-yard line. Skin of about five. They've been telling us about what a hard runner this Webster is, and man, he has certainly proven it this afternoon. Edmonton, Edmonton defense shifting around. They go into a, an eight-man, nine-man line, almost a ten-man line. Here's the pitch out. This time it's a fumble. Bewley fumbles, picks it up on the bounce, and he's brought down for a loss by Lindley. Well, 
Well, Lindley. It's thrown for a loss as he gets the old Argo bounce. He dropped that ball. It bounced right back to him. So it'll be third down and about uh, 11 yards to go. Bill Zock, number 62, is talking it over with the officials. Hayton is back along with Kruger. And Ray Poole is going to attempt a field goal from the 40-yard line. He has the favoring win. There's the snap. There's the kick. And not in there. It's taken by Kruger. He's up to his five, up to his ten. He fumbles. It's recovered by Trowick. He's on the ten, the five, and he's in the end zone. There's a whistle on the fly here. Trowick gobbled up that fumble, but apparently there was a whistle on the play. As you can see, the officials pointing to where Kruger was brought down. So it's first and ten for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 10-yard line. You're set, you're safe, you're sure with Prestone brand antifreeze, guaranteed to give you complete all-winter protection. First and 10 for the Edmonton Eskimos on their own 10-yard line. And uh, the handoff is to uh, Glenn Lippmann. Lippmann on the 10. He's brought down hard on about the 12 by Jim Mixner. Lemon playing right half in place of Broly Miles. And I don't believe Miles has been in the ball game in this quarter. As Len Lippman is now playing right half. Jackie Parker left half and uh, Normie Kwong is the fullback and Glenn McWinney is the flying wing. 18 to 14 for Montreal, second down. Seven yards to go for the Eskimos on their own, about their own 12. Here's Kwong off tackle to his right. There's no blocking. No hole. And uh, he carries to the 15 before he's stopped by Juan Sheridan. So it'll be third down. Third down and about uh, four yards to go. The ball is on the... About the 16-yard line. So it'll be third down and about three for the Edmonton Eskimos. Four minutes remaining in the uh, third quarter. And the safety man, Joey Powell and Julie. Here's Eagle Keys over the ball. And Poloni will kick from his own four-yard line. There's the snap. Almost blocked again by Hugo. Taken by Bule. Bule fades off. Uh, flips uh, lateral out to uh, Powell. Powell up to the 45 and the... End of the Eskimo charity brought down on the 40 by Mike King. So it's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes on the Edmonton Eskimo 40-yard line. That's referee Hap Schuldice of Ottawa on your TV screen. So Sam Echeverria, quarterback, stays in the pocket. There goes receivers. He's blocked, reverses his field, and he still gets away. There's the pass, and it's incomplete. Pass was intended for Alec Webster. He was being covered by Johnny Bright, and uh, Echeverry was almost trapped for a loss. Well, the rifle pulls out of that pocket, reversed his field, and made a first down. And it'll be first and ten for the uh, Alouettes. Or rather, first and goal to go on the seven. With a score, 18 to 14, in favor of the Montreal Alouettes over the Edmonton Eskimos. About two minutes remaining to three-quarter time. Here's the pitch out to Webster. Webster ball. I rather Hunsinger. And he's pinned. Strategy, I believe, there was to get that ball in front of the goalpost. Jim Weatherall just pinned uh, Hunziger, the right half. It's going to be second down, and there's a loss of six shots. The play it's back to the 12. Now, with a placement kicker like Ray Poole in your lineup, anywhere within striking distance of those goalposts is danger. So it's second down. How at your very. Going back to throw, there's the pass, and it is incomplete. Incomplete. 
intended for O'Quinn, and there's an injured player. Uh, one of the Eskimos ran into the goalpost, I believe. So it'll be third down and about 12 to go. That's a tough way to play football, running into that goalpost. Billy Briggs, number 42, crashed into the post. He'll have to come out for at least one play. So it's third down and 12 yards to go for a touchdown. Or a first down. So the timekeepers have moved out onto the uh, touchline now. Although the flag is not up as yet, indicating that there is a little less than two minutes remaining in this uh, third quarter. Referee uh, Matt Schultes calls time in. And uh, Ray Poole will try a placement from about the 17-yard line, about 20 yards in from the east side lines, as you can see. There's the snap, the kick, and it's not good. It goes back to the deadline for a single point. Back to the deadline for a single point, and the score, Montreal 19. Edmonton Eskimos 14. That's the first point in this quarter. And both teams had a couple of breaks that could have meant a big scoring play. So it'll be Edmonton Eskimos first and 10 on their own 25, and uh, the Eskimos will have a favoring wind in the fourth and last quarter in this ball game because it's sweeping down is up north, I believe, rather from the south. And the Eskimos in the white jerseys on your screen. That's the Montreal Alouette you see now to your right. So it's first and 10. Here's the entire backfield shifting off. Poloni pulls out of the pocket, throws the long one, and it is incomplete. Intended for Kruger and Coulter. Bruce Coulter, that is, number 65, was uh, the defender on that pass play. Poloni threw that long one from about his own 15 down to the Alouette's 50. But Coulter was covering Kruger, the deep man. So it is uh, second and 10 for the Eskimos on their own 25, and the minute flag is up. The flag is now up along the sideline. So there's one minute to play in this third quarter. <coughs> and here's Kruger over right tackle. He's brought down on the 30-yard line by Tex Coulter. Kruger is playing right half in place of Roley Miles. Lippman is playing left half in place of Jackie Parker. So we're not sure whether there's injuries down in that Edmonton camp or not, or whether Frank Ivey, the coach of the Edmonton Eskimos, is trying to uh, save some reserve strength for a last uh, quarter drive, as the Eskimos will have the favoring win. 19 to 14 is the score, a five-point spread here between two great teams. That's an unconverted touchdown. There's the snap back to Poloni. Ronnie gets the kick away. Joey Powell waits for it, takes it on his own 42. He's up to the 45, and he's tackled on the 45 by Bill Bray. It's first and 10 for the Montreal Alouettes. Briggs, incidentally, is in there snapping that ball at center for the Edmonton Eskimos. Eagle Keys was injured in the first quarter, and he has been used very sparingly. So it's first and 10 for the Alouettes. On their own 45, less than a minute to play in this third quarter. Sam Echeverry, there's the backfield in motion. Here's the pitch out to Hunzinger, to Webster rather, and uh, he's hit on the 45. Hit hard by Bob Dean on the 45 after a gain of about one yard. And so the score at the end of the third quarter is Montreal Alouette's 19, Edmonton Eskimos, 14. This Grey Cup game is coming to you from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Here's to the everyday things that end up being everything. Here's to all things simple with casual clothing and footwear from Marks. 
The Alouettes are in front by a five-point bulge, 19 to 14. The ball will be put in play by Montreal. First and 10, make that second and nine from their own 46-yard line. Flankers for the Alouettes. Just off your screen to the near sidelines are Pal and Alec Webster. Sam throws down the middle, complete to Aquino, who juggled it and held on finally at the Eskimos' 50-yard line. And Lindley, once again, is the number one man to hit him. That boy has played a whale of a ball game for Edmonton today. Alouette's first and ten from the Eskimos' 50-yard line. The 1954 Grey Cup game is definitely going to go down in history as one of the tightest and hardest fought ball games that's ever been seen here. Sam throws to Joey Powell, complete, and he is downed on the 27-yard line. Lindley again. Along with Bill Briggs, 42. Lindley's number, and you've heard Jack Wells and yours truly speak about him most of the afternoon. He scored the first Edmonton touchdown is number 81, lower right-hand side of your screen right now. And Briggs, the boy who tried to knock the goalpost down a few minutes ago, is number 42, and he has been in on a lot of tackles as well. Ball is on the 28-yard line, Alouette's possession. That's the Eskimo 28, first and 10. Pal is a wide flanker toward the near side. Alec Webster, quick opener to the right-hand side of the line. The hole open between tackle and end is the first down to the 13-yard line where Kruger, Oscar Kruger, 96, and that same Lindley finally put the stop on him. First and 10 for the Alouettes on the march downfield. Edmonton backed up against their own doorstep. Ball on the 13. Hunsinger carries. Hit by Bob Dean as he tried to crash over his own left tackle. May have picked up a yard or perhaps two. Again on the play is less than one yard, so let's call it second down and 10 from the 13. The Edmonton Ball Club does not in the third quarter, and this far, about two minutes in the fourth, seem to have the pepper that they showed in the first half. Webster and Pal are wide flankers. Throwing for Powell, complete for a touchdown. Joey Powell, number 82, the great Canadian flying wing of the Montreal Alouettes, on a typical pass play with Sam Echeverry. And we remember seeing them pull it many times during this season. He comes out to the near sidelines as a wide flanker, 24 to 14 on that TD. Goes down about uh, eight or ten steps, then cuts directly in to the secondary where the hole is opened up. And he took that one with nobody within five yards of him. Ray Poole on the conversion. Etcheverry holds from the 12-yard line. It is good. <clears throat> Montreal by 25 to 14. Joey Pal on your screen at this moment. Number 82. Played for Montreal when they won the Grey Cup back in 1949 and is the only non-U.S. starter, offensively speaking, for the Alouettes in all big four games this year. Steve, this is starting out like so many of the fourth quarters of the Montreal Alouettes. I think they took it from their about the 45, and I think it was five plays, and they were over for the touchdown. Dave, that's a very good and factual observation. It definitely is true that in the fourth quarter, they scored many points, as a matter of fact, they scored in the fourth quarter so many times. I believe their total was 120 points scored in the fourth quarter. 120 to their opponents, 35 in the Big Four season of 14 games. Pretty good example of how they powerhouse their opposition in that last 15 minutes. Here is the kickoff by Ray Poole, a bobbler that has already hit one Eskimo man is picked up and held down on the 38-yard line. It was Normie Kwong, number 95, who grabbed that loose ball that had caromed off one of the forward wall. It is first and 10 for Edmonton from the 38. 
They are facing now an 11-point deficit with 13 minutes left to play in the last quarter. That's Spalloni running wide. Nice blocking. Long pass intended for Lippmann. Tipped away from him by Bruce Kohler. Jackie Parker threw the beautiful block in the Edmonton backfield. That sprung Poloni loose, and he completed the pass. At least he fired it downfield. Intended for Glenn Lippmann. Traveled about 40 yards through the air, but Bruce Kohler, for the second time in about the last five minutes, was on the spot and deflected it. In addition to becoming darker at Varsity Stadium, it is becoming windier and a little touch colder. Maloney still got it. Down the middle to Bendiak, completed. Blacher hits him on the 50-yard line, and so does Larry Grigg. Blacher and Grigg tackle Steve Bendiak for a first down Edmonton, and there's one of the Eskimos down on the field of battle. It is Bendiak who took the forward pass and was in the middle of a bone-crushing tackle put on him by two Alouettes. Well, this has been a ball game of many surprises and very little scoring in the third quarter with the Montreal Alouettes exploding all of a sudden for that touchdown to Joey Powell. Roland Prather, 74, goes in and Bendiak comes out. Bendiak has played a fine ball game today. Don Barry is the Edmonton center, number 55. Maloney quarterbacking is number 90. Backfield shift to the right. Pass goes down the middle. Intended for, but intercepted. Bruce Colder of the Alouettes. Intended for Prather or McQuinney. Both men down there. McQuinney put the tackle on Colder. So the Alouettes have taken it over. First and 10 on their own 52-yard line. The tide of battle today has changed very rapidly on many occasions. The Eskimos got off to a resounding start when they scored from the opening kickoff, retaining possession all the way down. Alec Webster. Nice hole through center, and the big fellow plows for about seven yards before he's blocked down by Briggs. Jacques Bellec, number 87, has gone into the Alouette backfield to replace Virgil Wagner at fullback. Eskimo has set their defenses along the 50-yard line. Pass out is to Bill Buley. Holder is doing the blocking. Buley to the 40, 35, hurdles one man. Still on his feet at the 25-yard line. Hit from behind and down on the 15 by Johnny Bright and Parker. And Briggs, all three of them, but Bright hit him first. A great run by Buley. You see that uh, block that O'Quinn laid out there? That was the key to block on that play, Steve. Man, he opened it up. That is one of the best running exhibitions we've seen all year, Jack, by Bill Buley, who has not been used too much offensively, but he certainly lugged the mail that time down to the 13-yard line. First and 10, Montreal. Time gone by is four minutes of the final period. Alouette's 25, Eskimos 14. Buley is a flanker way out to the far side. Pitch out is to Webster. He's got one man to beat. He's down to the 10, driving for the five, and is stopped on the seven-yard line. Prather is the first man who got him. Number 74. And breaks number 42. 82 there is King, 63 is Weatherall, 61 is Bob Dean, and here are the Alouettes set to go with second down about three. Alec Webster is ganged up on the left side of the line, Prather hit him first. He was stopped on the seven yard line, so it is third down. Roughly five, maybe four yards left to go. Started from the 13, so it's third and four. Joey Powell is the boy at the bottom of your screen who moved out as a wide flanker on these sidelines. Sam will go to the air. He looks, 
Fires into the end zone to O'Quinn. Who lost the ball? Appeared to hit him in the stomach, but Kruger was guarding very nicely. And O'Quinn's vision was probably just a little bit blurred by Oscar Kruger. It slipped through his arms, hit him in the stomach, and down it went. Ask for and insist on Prestone brand antifreeze. Accept no substitute. With Prestone antifreeze, you're set, you're safe, you're sure. Here we go, first and ten for Edmonton from their own 25-yard line. Sudden burst to the middle by little Glenn Lipman. He's still going. Man, how that little guy goes. He's to the 47-yard line. He is 5 feet 8, weighs 170 pounds. You'd wonder where all that driving power comes from. But finally, Tommy Hugo got him from behind and dragged him down on the 47-yard line. Speedster is the word, but he's got an awful lot of drive in those legs. Eskimos in possession. The big crowd is talking up. Loose ball in the backfield. Falling on. Looks like Parker. A cross up in the Eskimos offensive signals there. And the loose ball was fallen on by Jackie Parker for a loss back to the 40. They're saying the 45 yard line. The nose of the football as you see right there. Just short of the 45. Second down about 12. Alouette's using a five-man line, a 5-4 defense. That's Filoni with the ball, running wide. Nice block by Parker. Bernie's going to run it. He is almost good for the first down across midfield to the Alouette's 53-yard line. Ted Elsby, the man who made the stop on him. First down it is. Nice run by Bernie Filoni. Eskimos are trailing by 11 points with a little less than 10 minutes to go, but... From what we saw earlier today, anything could and possibly will happen in this football game for sure. Whole backfield moves in motion to these sidelines. Maloney looks, throws, completed a beautiful kick by Glenn McQuinney, who did a great tumble, as you saw, onto the cinder track, but held onto the football for a first down. Larry Gregg defensively knocked him out of bounds. There has been, and I say again, a lot of talk about Filoni being a very mediocre passer. I don't believe he has been off his target all day. A couple have been intercepted and quite a few knocked down by alert Montreal defenses. He managed to get the ball away finally. It came very close to being intercepted by Jimmy Michener of the Alouettes. The defenses were something civ like that time and let the Alouettes forwards get through too much. Filoni backtracked a couple of times, couldn't find a receiver open, finally threw, and Michener came very close to intercepting. So it just goes as an incomplete forward pass, second and ten. Ball is on the Alouettes' 38-yard line, Eskimos possession. Clock shows eight minutes left in the ballgame. Nick Winnie is the flanker just off the top of your screen. Big Judd is to Parker. Lots of running room. He's to the 30. Chased by Hunsinger. Across the 20. Knocked out of bounds by Colter. Loose ball, but I believe the play has been stopped on the 13-yard line. A great run by Jackie Parker. A 25-yard sweep around his own right end. Parker had all the room in the world, and gee, he sure traveled. Lindley is coming in, and Prather goes out of the Eskimo lineup. First and ten, Edmonton, on the Alouette's 13-yard line. Crowd begins to buzz again. Maloney hands off to Lipman, the little guy's to the five-yard line, he's over! A 
35 to 19. And with automatic Bob Dean coming in, it should go to 25 to 20. See, the hole opened up, and that guy just scooted for 13 yards. And I don't believe more than two or three people laid a hand on him. Maloney will hold for Dean. He will kick from the 12-yard line. He does. It's good. That is Dean's 44th consecutive conversion this year. He converted the first Edmonton touchdown today. There's the little scooter from way down Texas way. The Aggies, Glenn Lipman. Dean converted the first one. A high pass from center prevented him from getting a boot at the second, but he sure did it this time. This ball game is very much wide open yet. 25 for the Alouettes and 20 for Edmonton. Clock showing uh, seven and a quarter minutes left to play. Dean will kick off. We have Brig, Webster, and Hunsinger, the deep men for the Alouettes, as usual, in the vicinity of the goal line and the five-yard line. Hold up was occasioned by Edmonton being a man short, but they're set to go now. Here we are. Very deep to Webster at the goal line. The 10, 15, and is down on the 18-yard line. Rolly Miles, who has just come back in the ball game a few moments ago, got down and nailed Webster on the 18. It is first and 10 for the Alouettes from that point. <coughs> Double reverse in the Alouette backfield. Hunsinger for the far sidelines. Cuts back in nicely. Is down on the 25 by Ron Prather. Big number 74. Just got up. Well, is in the 25-yard line, second down, three yards to go, 15 yards in from the far sideline. Webster, nice hole. Lateral to Joey Powell, he's at the 40. Down on the 52-yard line. Lindley again. Jackie Parker says, I've got a loose football here, how about it, Mr. Official? But the official says the whistle had blown. Lindley racked himself up making that last tackle. Lindley has come off, and Mendrick has taken his place, number 88 at the bottom of your screen. First and ten for the Alouettes. Chuck Hunsinger, not too much running room, but he manages to drive through for about five yards before Bob Dean puts the tackle on him, along with Ted Tully. It is across midfield into Eskimo territory at the 53-yard line. We have six minutes left in the ball game. Montreal in front of Edmonton by 25 to 20. Back in 1949, Montreal beat Calgary 28 to 15. Free a scoring game on both sides, but this is even better. Etcheverry throws for Powell, great catch. And down he goes on the 37 yard line. Mendrick just came in for Edmonton and made the stop. Officials mark it down on the 36, where it is another Alouette first down. <clears throat> 
Huley is the ball carrier. Fumble. Eskimo recovery, so indicated by the referee. And this crowd, which obviously is predominantly for the West, goes slightly wild once again. Ted Tully, number 51, the man credited with recovering that fumble by Bill Buley. You'll go a long way and you'll wait a long time before you see a football game complete with all the thrills we've had today. And it's not over yet. About five minutes to go, a little more. It's Jackie Parker throwing a pass and Kenny for Lipman. He lost control of it. Guarded by Hunsinger and Bruce Calder. Lipman, who scored the last Edmonton touchdown on that miraculous burst through the center of the line, apparently shook himself up just a little bit as he fell into the end zone. Until he came out now, he was walking up and down very slowly in front of the Edmonton bench. But he moved kind of fast that time. Second and ten, just short of the 35. McQuinney is a flanker. Maloney looks, throws to Bendiak, complete. Out of bounds he goes, I believe, short of a first down by about one yard. Jim Michener, 83 of the Alouettes, forced him out. It is third down and a good yard left to go. So the burden comes on Mr. Poloni, and from the field, referee Hap Ice is giving the five-minute signal. Now remember, that means that that uh, new safety touch rule is in effect. Not that I believe we are going to have that come up, but we'll try and explain it to you in just a few moments. Loose ball! Recovered by Ted Elsby, number 68, who fell on one of his teammates. And let's give the credit to his teammate as soon as he comes up, Jimmy Miller. Intercollegiate boxing champion at McGill three times, and he made the recovery, so Alouettes take over. This Grey Cup football game is coming to you from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Gamble with your car. Don't take chances with Boilaway Antifreeze. Get Prestone Antifreeze. Alec Webster and a pitch out from Sam Echeverry is nailed behind the line of scrimmage, or maybe just at it, by Johnny Bright of the Edmonton Eskimos. There is no appreciable gain on the play. Call it second down and ten. The recovery by Jimmy Miller, with Ted Elsby falling right smack on top of his teammate just to make sure. Gave Montreal the ball on the Edmonton 41-yard line. Pal is flanked way out on these sidelines. Sam looks, throws down the middle, complete to O'Quinn. He's down, but not before he picks up a first down on the 21-yard line. Oscar Kruger, defensive back, number 96, makes the tackle. Kruger shook himself up just a little bit on that play. We'll try and get a shot of this for you later. The CRU Secretary, Harry McBrien, has taken the Grey Cup to the scorer's table on the near sideline. This is Hunsinger with the ball. Holder leads the blocking. Hunsinger is still going down to about the 14. Mendrick stops him there. Chuck tried to get some more yardage. We'll see what the officials say about it. They are going to allow it, I believe, to the 10-yard line. The ball is not quite to the 10-yard line, so a first down will leave it short of the goal line by about maybe one foot. Time remaining unofficially, three and a half minutes. Montreal 25, Edmonton 20. Hunsinger nailed behind the line of scrimmage. Tries the lateral, the ball is loose. Johnny Bright has got it for Edmonton. Jackie Parker, not Johnny Bright. Jackie Parker in this stadium is going crazy. 
about 95 yards. This is an absolute madhouse. His father and brother are undoubtedly the happiest people in the entire stadium right now. They came up from down below the border, and it was Jackie Parker who picked up that loose ball that Chuck Hunsinger threw away on a wild lateral. Touchdown for Edmonton. There is Parker on your screen. I'll tell you, he's happy, but man, is he ever tired. High ball game. How do you like that? Three minutes according to the clock, but not given officially from the field. And Dean has his big chance right now. Edmonton leads the Great Cup 26 to 25. There's Jackie Parker on the screen now. Steve. And man, this is no place for weak hearts, I don't think. Uh, that's the Western gang here is certainly getting the kicks right now. Well, how long it'll last is hard to say. Eskimos take the lead 26 to 25. And I think it's just about three minutes remaining in this fourth and final quarter. Naturally, the uh, Montreal Alouettes will receive. And you know, Steve, we were talking about what happens if we have a tie ball game. This could be a tie ball game. And I think we have two 10 minute uh, Overtime periods if it gets that far, don't we? That is right, Jack. The score is 26 to 25. And I'm happy to say it seems to be getting a little brighter once again. The kickoff is being held up because of a conference at the bottom of your screen to the right. Phil Zock of the Eskimos, co-captain, along with Morris, talking to two of the officials. And it could be about just exactly what Jack Wells was talking about a moment ago, what happens if a tie comes up. Dean will kick off. It is very deep to Webster, a good five yards in the end zone. He's out to the 10 yard line. The 15, down these sidelines, the 30, pushed out of bounds by Kruger on the 34 yard line. There is a sleeper on the far side for the Alouettes. No, sir, he's gone off now. The crowd over there got on him as they discovered him. It was Jimmy Michener, normally a defensive back, who was on the sidelines at the 30-yard line and is being sent across the field by one of the officials. Here he is now. He was a sleeper on the far side of the field. But the crowd, which you've got to say today is predominantly for the West, 6,000 Alouette supporters to the contrary. They roared their disapproval. Three minutes has been given officially from the field. Alouette's ball, first and 10, their own 35. Sam will throw it. Complete to O'Quinn, who is playing an amazing game today for the Alouettes. Jackie Parker made the stop. Red O'Quinn shaken up just a little bit. Had the wind knocked out of him on that tackle. And Tommy Moran, number 77, is going in. O'Quinn says, I'm okay, you go on out. So now they're playing Alphonse and Gaston, and finally O'Quinn stays in. Webster flanks on the far side, Pal on the near side lines. Etch will throw again. He does. To O'Quinn complete. He's down and fumbles. Recovered by the Eskimos, number 42, Briggs. O'Quinn is absolutely heartbroken on the field. He's lying down. Now, whether he's hurt or just genuinely heartbroken, I don't know. He was racked up on the tackle, lost the ball. The Alouette trainer has gone out, and the officials are signaling, as you see, an Eskimo recovery, which could be the biggest break of the whole game. And Bill Briggs who made that recovery is also hurt. Well. Steve, I don't know, uh, 
If you live to be a hundred and continue to TV football or broadcast football games, I don't think you'll ever see one that has had uh, so much tenseness and excitement as, as this particular ball game here today. A, a lot of breaks both ways. I, I don't know, we haven't tabulated them up here, but this, as you say, could be the big break, and both clubs have had a lot of breaks, but this one could be the big one. You're so very right, Jack. There are two minutes left to go. Eskimos possession first and ten from their own 47-yard line. Nomi Kwong carried. Hits into the center of the line. The Eskimos may be just trying to eat up yardage and time combined. About a minute and 45 seconds remaining. And of course, they want to retain possession of the ball, move it along the ground, and keep the clock running. Second down and eight yards to go. Polony has still got that football. Running wide. Hits to the sidelines. Ridden out of bounds at midfield. Hunsinger, the man who knocked him out. He is short of a first down by maybe two yards. The clock shows about a minute and ten seconds to go. The man with the flag, Argonauts Ted Punchard, is at the sidelines. So is timer Joe Wright. The flag, however, is not up as yet. The Alouettes are sending out their punt receivers, Bill Buley and Joey Powell, figuring, I presume, quite naturally that the Eskimos, in possession of a two, one point lead, the flag is up. Right at midfield, the flag is up. There you see it. Maloney will kick from his 45. Beautiful high spiral. To Buley at the seven yard line, nailed on the 13. Briggs hit him first. Well, I promise you one thing. If this score stands as it is right now, you had better batten down the hatches in the immediate vicinity of this city of Toronto. I don't know why you should say that, Steve. There's hardly any Westerners out here. Well, all the Easterners in Varsity Stadium today, 6,000 from Montreal accepted, must, Jack, be pulling for Edmonton. Underdogs by four or five to one, they have played a miraculous football game. Steve, I wonder how uh, all those people laying five to one on uh, the Alouettes are feeling about now. <laughs> how, about all that, uh, how about that big point spread they're offering, Dave? How about it? How about the whole thing? <coughs> I just feel sorry Simply for wonderful. Quinn, you know, he's been the hero in the go to the same ball game. That is true. That is true, Mo. So true. No. Sam will throw. He's back to his five yard. He's going to run it at the 20. 25 still going at the 30. Spilled out of bounds. Bob Hayton, number 94, knocked him out. The officials say the 33 yard line. Alouette's first down. Less than one minute to go. 26-25 Edmonton. Bernie Filoni has gone in for Edmonton to play a defensive position for the first time today. Sam will throw it. Intercepted. No, he dropped the ball. King had his hands on it, intended for Joey Powell. King seemed to regain possession of it. Then finally... Dropped it, and the one-minute flag is still up on the sidelines. Can't be more than about 20 or 30 at the most seconds left to go. Ground camera shot showed it to you there. Hodgson has come in, replacing Bob Dean for Edmonton in the line. Etcheverry will throw. He does. Deep. It's intended for Moran. Over his head. Intercepted. But there's a marker on the field. And there may be a little bit of a scramble as well. This play is going to have to be carried out in spite of the fact the gun sounded to officially end the game. 
Interference is being called. Interference was called against Mike King. So the Alouettes have one more fading chance. Oh, this is a real humdinger. You won't see a blade of grass after this play because the crowd will be on that field. Etcher's throwing very long, intended for Webster. The ball goes loose. There is the gun. The game is over. The final score of this Grey Cup game from Varsity Stadium, Toronto, is the Edmonton Eskimos, 26, Montreal Alouettes, 25, and in just a moment, a summary of the game. Well, you saw it. I don't know whether you still believe it or not. It's pretty hard to believe up here such a garrison finish. The final score, 26-25, as you know. People down there, you can see all those Edmonton players getting mobbed. Pop Ivy, the coach, trying to help them through. That's Pop with the Stetson on and the light coat. There goes Frankie Morris, a former Torontonian, carrying the Grey Cup. You see him going off with it. A fantastic, wonderful football game here at Varsity Stadium this afternoon. In that last quarter, fine pass by Filoni, a great run by Parker, took the ball to the 14, and then Lipman broke through and went for the touchdown. Dean converted, and it was the Alouettes 24, the Eskimos 20. Hunsinger was caught from behind the line. He threw the ball away. I don't think he tried to lateral it because there was nobody there to throw it to. But he just let that ball go. Jackie Parker picked it up on the Eskimo 17-yard line and went all the way for the touchdown. Dean converted, and the Esks were in front, and they stayed in front. It was a pretty wonderful football game here this afternoon and one that will have the fans talking not only in Toronto and Varsity Stadium, but all across the network in Canada and certainly all across the network in the United States because it was seen perhaps by more people than any, well, we know it was seen by more uh, people than any Grey Cup final, any Canadian football game has ever been seen by. It was a tremendous game, and believe me, they saw it all. Who are you going to pick for the Stars? I don't know. You've got to go along with Lindley for the Eskimos who played a terrific game. But let's get Steve and Jack in here. We'll try and highlight some of this for you and uh, find out just who they pick as the outstanding players. I'm afraid, Jack, that the, uh, I guess that there is a goat in this game. It has to be Chuck Hunsinger who has played a tremendous game of ball for the Alouettes all year. Well, um, you know, you have to feel sorry for a fellow like O'Quinn too, Dave. Here was a boy that played, I think, the greatest game of pass receiving end I've ever seen this afternoon here. You may recall that he had that one pass with Edmonton driving, or with, rather with Montreal driving. He was hit and fumbled, and that gave the ball back to the Edmonton Eskimos when they needed it more than any other time in their football history. You can't help but feel sorry for a fellow like O'Quinn. Now, frankly, I thought that the Montreal Alouettes, and I haven't seen the statistics, Dave, I think the Alouettes did outplay the Edmonton Eskimos by a shade, and uh, it was a game of breaks on both sides. But the one big break, the one that really counted most, was the one when Jackie Parker gobbled up that fumble. I'm not sure whether Hudson could try to flip it, one of those flea flicker passes out, or whether he fumbled or was just trying to ground the ball at one. I'm not quite convinced myself, but that was the one Parker galloped for about 80 yards on the touchdown. And, of course, we saw that great run of O'Quinn's that tied up the score early in the ball game as well. But when it comes down to a thrill and excitement, when you get a ball game that played for the big prize of them all, the Grey Cup, there's a one-point spread, and it ends this way. Gee, I wouldn't want to be on the losing side. I sure bet those Montreal Alouette boys are feeling mighty tough about it. And it's one of those things in sport. But you can imagine the joy and excitement and enthusiasm as it's taking place in the Edmonton dressing room right now with Frank Pop Ivy and his club. I've seen a lot of great cups, but this has been the one. Jack, I'd just like to come in for a second before Dave wraps it up to say it was a distinct pleasure to work with you 
and your fine spotter Mo Simovich here this afternoon, and Dave Price and all the wonderful CBC gang, from the very back man to the very front man, all the way down the line, a distinct pleasure again to work football with them in 1954. That goes double for me too, Steve, it's been fun. Well, Steve, it has been a wonderful season we've had since August the 28th. I've certainly enjoyed it. We've had a lot of fun. We've seen a lot of wonderful football games. And in closing off at this time, we'd like to extend thanks to members of our technical crew. Our cameramen have been Don Elsliger, Rocky Frecker, Ron Gatiss, and Peter Hollidge. Our video operators, Bill Gasson, Roy Hilkema, John Totten, and our audio operators, Ken Chapman and Gavin Kelly. And so the final score was Edmonton Eskimos 26, the Montreal Alouettes 25, and the Edmonton Eskimos are the 1954 Grey Cup champions of Canada.